don't know if it's live. Hello, hello everybody. Um, so I'm going to say right now that our internet is still misbehaving. So if I cut out, I'm really sorry. If I cut out, I'll give it like five minutes to try and get this stream back up. And if it fails, then I'll start a new one. And I'm going to do that one more, one, once. If I have to start a new stream, I'll do it once. And if it fails after that, then I'm going to give up for the day because um, the internet cut out around about four or five times yesterday morning. But then for the rest of the day, it was totally fine. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? We shall see. So Nancy's here. Good morning, Sean and Peeps. Good morning, Nancy. Cecilia says, good morning, Peeps. I won't be able to join until later, but I've missed you all and hope everyone is well. Good morning, Cecilia. And thank you for joining us when you can. And I'm good, so I hope you all are too. Alison says, hello, Sean and Peeps. Hope you are well and taking good care of yourselves. Thank you, um, Alison. I hope you are too. Caroline says, good morning, Sean and Peeps. Hope you are all well. Very well, thank you. And Nimoy says, hello everyone. I hope nobody has melted yet. People uh, popping in for a while before lunch and getting some sewing started. Nimoy, I need to reply to your email. I'm so sorry. I, in my head, had that I had done it and I haven't, have I? I'm terrible. I will do that later today. And if I don't, poke me to remind me because we all clearly know what I'm like. Um, Lynn says, bonjour, Sean. Bonjour, Lynn. Uh, Julie says, hi, love. Hello, Julie, how are you? And uh, Nicole says, Nimue, it's raining here in Inverness. It's absolutely being it down here as well. I am in my fluffy socks and even considered putting tights on today because it's cold. I mean, it's not cold, it's 21 degrees, but that's a far cry from what it was a couple of days ago when it was like 32 degrees here. So yeah, uh, Judy is here. Good morning, good morning, Judy. And Rachel's here, hello, how are you? Nimoy says it's fine, heat not helping the brain. We're heading for 31 degrees since centigrading in there. Wow, that's so warm. That's so, so warm. Um, oh, and Caroline says we'll probably get that rain later. Oh, well. I mean, it's, it's nice. I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining at all. Because, I mean, I'm, I wasn't complaining about the heat either. I get lots of people come in and go, oh, 30 degrees, that's nothing. It's like 42 here. Yes, but the UK is not set up to be hot. We don't have air conditioning in our houses. We have heating, but we have no air conditioning. And our public buildings tend to not be air conditioned either. So, I mean, not that anyone's really going out in public anymore. But it was quite pleasant to go and sit, you know, go and stand in the um, freezer aisle in the in the local supermarket. But yeah, we as a country are not set up for anything really over 25 degrees. If it gets over that, it tends to be quite uncomfortable. And as I say, like I, I like the heat. I mean, I was I was in my element in Saudi Arabia because, you know, it's 45 degrees but there was air conditioning and there was a swimming pool. So when it got to the point where I was actually melting, I could put myself into the pool, which was heat, still heated, and cool down. And we don't have that option here. So when it gets just like a sauna, it's it just gets to the point where there's there's no there's no relief anywhere. Having said that, uh, my HelloFresh uh, packs of water uh, ice packs that turned up. I've been rolling them in a towel and putting them on the back of my neck. And mum's actually just received this morning. It came yesterday, but she didn't open it until today because it was addressed to me. But she's just received a gel pack that you can put on the back of your neck, having had it in the fridge. Perfect timing because it's now 21 degrees, so we don't need it. <laughs> but yeah, we um, we as a country are not set up for heat, not not set up to deal with heat well. I mean, we were, I've bought a fan, which for the two days that I've used it was just amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, I did look into air conditioning units, but they are so chunky, so, so chunky. So yeah, went for the fan and it was good. It was good. It was worth it. It was worth the £40 for the two days that I used it. I mean, we'll probably end up with some more heat as well, but it, yeah, it was a little bit like typical, like, you know, gets hot, order a fan, immediately the weather cools off. But yeah. Uh, where did I get to with the chat? Uh, Alison says to hello to Rachel, have missed your vlogs, hope you're well. Julie says, I'm here for about 15, 30 minutes for now. We're going out for something exciting soon. Ooh, very nice, Julie. Um, 
Rachel says, thank you, Alison. I'm okay. I'll be back soon. Julie says, same in Denmark. Caroline says, it's not the heat as much as the humidity. The day after son's wedding in Portugal was 42 degrees and bearable, but last week here was 36, was awful. Yeah, humidity has a big deal to a big lot to do with it as well. I mean, like the Saudi Arabia heat that I was talking about was 45 degrees, but it was dry desert heat because Riyadh is right in the middle of the desert. So it wasn't humid there. So again, that, that you know, that wasn't like you walking through a hot bath. I've been to like Singapore was amazing, but it was humid. And I looked, I, I anyone seen that episode of Friends where they go to Bermuda, I think it is. Yeah, I, I looked like Monica. <laughs> Um, Johnny is back. Hi, I still can't see any Lego in your room. <laughs> no, because Johnny, if I start buying Lego, I will not stop and I will end up with more places for no store. It's like I, I have a giant list of patterns. The very lovely Alexandra sent me a thing saying that Spotlight were having their $6 sale on patterns, which is around three, three British pounds per Vogue pattern, which is an amazing deal. And I looked through and I was just like, I want them all, but I have zero space to put any new patterns. And actually what I was thinking we'd do today is I thought I would finish off this dress because I ended up taking yesterday off completely. So I did zero sewing. Chiana and I sat on the sofa and uh, Chiana decided that my lap was the place to be, which was amazing. So we sat on the sofa and watched Vampire Diaries. So this dress still needs its sleeves. Um, so I'm gonna, I am gonna. was planning on doing that with you guys today. And then I do have two other things cut out, but I don't wanna sew either of them at the moment. So I was thinking I need to catalog my patterns um, to add to my website so that I have, because loads of you guys have Trello and different apps and things like that that you use to catalog your patterns. And I have my own dedicated website with the cap cap capacity to store my patterns on there and then link back to either sew alongs or blog posts of, of patterns that I've made so that is my plan um, but it does mean that I need to take photographs of all of my patterns so I thought that might be something fun that we could do together this afternoon is um, I'll get out a section of patterns I'll take a photo of each of them we'll talk about um, if you guys have made it if I've made it what we think of it and that that kind of thing so yeah that's, that's the plan for today. That's what I was thinking. I hope you guys are up for that because that's probably what I'm going to do. Uh, where did I get to with the chat? Uh, Nicola says, hello all, looking forward to a me afternoon with you all. It's been really, I, I'll be really irritated if we get uninvited visitors. Oh no, not good. Alison says to Rachel, look forward to seeing what you've been making too and see if you have bought any more fabric. Beautiful pic of Pluto on Facebook the other day. Yeah, Pluto looked beautiful in your beautiful kitchen, Rachel. Rachel's, um, Rachel's been enabling me. She keeps sending me photos from Stitch Fabrics and it's basically Stitch Fabrics have got the entirety of the Dolce & Gabbana spring summer 2020 collection in fabric form. And I haven't bought any, but she keeps sending me photos of all the beautiful fabrics they keep putting up. And I'm like, I need it. But it's, it's £35 a metre for some of the silks. I have restrained myself. I have no idea how. There was this like, this jungle tropic one with all the animals on it that the first time around I missed out on it. And I was like, no, right, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And then they had another two metres come back into stock. And I was like, OK, I'm done. I'm buying it. And by the time I'd got to check out, it had gone. Which is good because I don't need any more fabric. I said no sewist ever. <laughs> um, let's see. Julie says it's about 75% humidity in Denmark with 31 plus degrees centigrade heat. Wow. Um, Aunt B's Creation says good morning from South Carolina in the USA. Good morning. Natalie says afternoon everyone. Good afternoon, Natalie. Kerry says good morning. Good evening from Melbourne, Australia. We're running the gamut of time zones, aren't we? Uh, Caroline says so. Caroline says it sounds good to me. Eliva says good morning from Ohio. Good morning. Caroline A says morning all. Joining you today while I tackle the buttons on my Lysol and Co classic shirt. Good luck with that. Nicholas says, Sean, that sounds like a great idea. Looking at your patterns, but sounds like it might cost me money. <laughs> 
don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Julie says, good girl, Sean. Thank you, Julie. It's been something I've been putting off for ages, so I really need to pull my finger out and start doing it. Um, Ruth Ann says, good morning from Virginia. Good morning. Natalie says, sewing a lining in today, my first ever lining eek. You can do it, Natalie. You can do it. And Rachel says, I finished the kimono this morning at the Jungle Silk. It's amazing. Oh, Rachel. Oh, I'm so jealous. If it comes back into stock, I'm buying myself some and I'm getting some of the pineapples as well. I want to make an Eve dress out of the pineapples. I don't know if I, do, I, I have Pinterest. All on Pinterest. Um, let's see. Did I save it? Oh, I don't know if I did. I'm just waiting for um, Stitch Fabrics to get this into stock. Because <laughs> so I'm going to need that too. <laughs> um, where is it? I think I'm going to actually have to search for Dulce and Gabbana. Um, Okay, so that's the um, that's the silk that Rachel's just made her kimono out of, which is beautiful. And then there's a better dress. I'm trying to find the better dress with the pineapple print on it. There it is. That's the pineapple leafy print that she sent me a picture of the other day, which I'm very tempted by. Very, very tempted by. Can you anyone guess why? It's got leaves on it. <laughs> um, oh, and Rachel says, Hubby's bought me the pineapples. Oh, that's so nice of him. Caroline says, son and daughter-in-law may be over later as Hub spent early hours in A&E. He's okay, but reaction because of working in heat on 7th and awful blood disease as a kid told to rest or risk kidney failure. Well, tell him, strap him to the bed if you need to, but uh, I hope he feels better. Poor thing. Oh, and Caroline as well. I have to say, I think I'm on book five of the Amelia P Peabody series. I am adoring them. Um, the narrator, it's just, it's, Perfect, absolutely perfect. They're amazing, Caroline. So thank you so much for recommending them for me. Ilova says, love your waffles and, and beautiful your sewing is. Thank you. Um, uh, Judy says to Rachel, looking forward to seeing the kimono this week and Sean, she's taking me to Walton's. Oh, are you going to Walton's? Can I ask you a massive favor, please? Please, 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 please. In your last video, when you want, went to Walton's, they had some of this still in the in the window, and this is um, this is uh, what I made my Vogue nine three four five shirt dress out of, and that's a sleeve. So I have two sleeves, and then this is all I have left to make a shirt out of, which I kind of want to do. But if I can make a dress, because I'm thinking I actually want to make the same dress, but the short version and put the sleeves on, because I think it either needed to be the maxi dress sleeveless, which I did, or it needs to have the um, short version, that what well, the just below the knee version, but then I can get away with the giant sleeves on it. Um, but they, when you when you went last time, they had this in the window still, I noticed when you vlogged. So could I could I possibly get you to get me three meters, please? I of course will pay. Um, I need to message you. I meant to talk to you about that the other day, actually, Rachel. Completely out of my brain. Um, but yes, if it's still there, could I have some, please? That would be amazing because the textile centre only have a meter of it, and I don't think that's going to be enough. So. <laughs> Rachel says yes I'll pick you up some thank you so much thank you <laughs> um Alison says to Kerry how is everyone down in Melbourne I reckon it would be a bit like living in Gilead a uh, handmaid's tale oh wow <laughs> not the place you want to be um Julie says no uh 
Uh, Judy says, of course. And Rachel says they're going on Tuesday. Kerry says, cold, so don't mind being locked inside. That's good. Maeve says, hi, Sean. Lovely to be sewing with you again. Hi, Maeve. Thank you for joining us. You bought me a coffee the other day. I'm sure you did. So thank you very much for that. I haven't said thank you to the people that have bought me coffees or hello to the new Patreon peeps. I need to do that in tomorrow's vlog. I am um, tomorrow is going to be part two of the 5951 so along going up in the afternoon I didn't vlog yesterday I literally spent the entire day on the sofa with Chiana on my lap and that never happens ever and even to the point where I, I, I actually kind of had to move because I needed to go to the bathroom and came back and she got back on the lap it was like so um yeah watching playing with Chiana watching Vampire Diaries and then playing this 3D puzzle game that I found match 3D I it's, it's way too addictive you have to like they're all 3D items and you have to make, match two of them and um yeah I think I did like 80 levels yesterday <laughs> <laughs> whilst watching Vampire Diaries so yeah um, but that means I didn't vlog and it would have been the most boring vlog in the world ever I mean I had a wonderful time but yes it would have been it would have been not good so uh, yeah um, I'm going to have the part two of the summer on go up tomorrow then I will be vlogging tomorrow so there will be a waffle on Wednesday and I'm hoping to get the rest of the 5951 edited so that that can go up in the morning on Wednesday so you should be getting two videos on Wednesday fingers crossed um Judy says can you email or pm us a photo via messenger uh yes of course I can um but Rachel knows exactly which one it is because she has some herself <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will send you a picture of it so that you guys know what I'm talking about but yes that's amazing of you thank you so much I am so jealous actually you know what guys do you mind would you mind like you know maybe sort of facetiming me while you're at Walton's because I can vicariously live through you because that would be amazing I haven't been in a fabric shop since uh, the last Gold Hawk Road meetup which was a while ago <laughs> so that would be really cool if, if you don't mind, I'm sorry. I'm completely gay crashing your your um your afternoon. You both said yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sorry, just totally invite myself. <laughs> um. Oh, tea, tea. I've had um I had my lunch early today actually, so that I didn't have to eat while I'm on on camera with you guys. I did the Asian spot Asian that's Asian. Asian spicy pork noodles and it was amazing it was a HelloFresh one I'm sorry I'm going to keep banging on about HelloFresh because I am so so enjoying the service I'm actually going to get my manager to approach them and see if they will sponsor me because we might not talk about them <laughs> um, Caroline says so glad you're enjoying them new author for you to try LB Hathaway Paul Parker set in 1920s loving these Drat Posey Parker oh okay cool I shall, have, I shall check them out, although the Peabody series, I've got loads to get through, so I highly recommend. I'm on the Lion in the Valley at the moment. It's just the, it's the narrator. Peabody! It's just brilliant. <laughs> um, Julie says, is she ill? Um, she is so... It is, she is so a, a high geek kitten at the moment. I can never pronounce that correctly. Um, she's not ill. She's much, 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 much better. Much better. Um, but it is a bit chilly. And I think she's in nesting mode as well, which does tend to mean that she wants to be near me a little bit more often. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was just, it was just lovely. She was determined to be on the lap yesterday, which was gorgeous. I think she knew that I wasn't feeling particularly wonderful either. And you know, you know cats are pretty good at like comforting their humans when their humans aren't being particularly brilliant um so judy and rachel are both saying that yes no problem i think uh, judy says come up to walton's in person judy I, I can't i can't god i'd love to i will do eventually because um i think rachel big bird and i are planning on visiting big bird's sister-in-law in york and she has a giant house, so we're going to set up a sewing room in there. So we'll have to then go and do um, fabric shopping from there when that sort of thing is possible. Um, so at some point, 
I will come to Walton's in person. But if I could, if I could join you guys via FaceTime, that'd be amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Andy's here. Hello, all. Hello, Andy. How did your Sorrento jacket go? I'm sure you put a photo up in the peeps group. But the top stitching was looking amazing on it. Maeve says, don't feel guilty about rest days. I had about two weeks like that, I'm feeling so much better now. Yeah, no, it was it was it was really good yesterday. It was something definitely needed. Definitely needed. So yeah, I can't believe I like Wilson only left on Wednesday, but it feels like he hasn't been here for ages. So it's kind of yeah, yeah. Um, where did I get to? Caroline says, I love the cat Bastet. <laughs> Wait till you meet Anubis. Oh, I'm seriously considering um, calling my next cat the cat Bastet. <laughs> and Ramsey's the way he pronounces everything. It's just, oh, it's just brilliant. It's so good. It's so, so good. Uh, B Creation says, I do. We have three cats. Oh, I want more. I think Gianna might kill me if I have more in the space than we have, though. It's not fair to her at the moment. Julie says, I know you're bad at pronouncing the few Danish words I write here in the chat, so no worries. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Andy says, I did, just haven't picked up the courage to do the buttons yet. I have cream one cut out too. Thank you, lovely. And that should say plucked. Yes, um, not plucked. Uh, yeah, no, Andy, it took me, It I finished my Kelly Anorak, like completely finished, and then it sat there for about a month waiting for press studs to be put on it because I was terrified of, of, of messing it up. I was going to say a different word then. Um, yes, I was terrified of messing it up. So I completely feel you, Andy, don't worry. I know exactly what you mean. Um, Judy says it's not called rest, it's called self-care. Yeah, yeah. We all need those kinds of days every now and again, don't we? Judy says, can Wilson work from home all the time? You two could see about getting living arrangements on the island um he, we don't know if he's going to be able to we don't know when his office office is reopening um and we um yeah we don't know when his office is reopening um but at the moment he's working from home but the trouble is that the internet whilst he was here was just terrible it was awful like it, it was just dropping out all the time and the engineer's been and I think I mentioned this in the waffle the other day. The engineer's been, and there's a, there was a problem with the external line, which they've now fixed. So, so the entirety of the wiring from our house to the point on the road is brand new and perfectly, you know, a okay. But there is a junction point about four or five houses down that is apparently the engineer said it needed replacing three years ago, and apparently that could be the issue. And it's still it dropped out so much yesterday. So yeah we'll see how it goes we'll see how it goes um and he says i'm going to get hubby to do it and then blame him if it messes up yeah i got my dad to help me with mine <laughs> um victoria says good morning from virginia good morning victoria kathy says good morning sean and peeps from pennsylvania good morning Lynn says, hi, Sean and everyone. Are you going to be saying today? I'm going to be finishing the sweetheart dress. So I need to put the sleeves on. I need to hem the sleeves and I need to tack the facing down. And then I'm going to have a look at the hem. I think it's dropped on the bias, but I'm going to make sure. And if it has, then I'm going to leave it for another couple of days to drop a bit more. And if it hasn't, then I'm going to sew on some bias binding. I think I'm thinking I'm going to bias bind the sleeves as well although that might add a bit more bulk than I'd want so I might just turn the sleeves in and in again and then slip stitch them down because I don't want visible top stitching on this if I can help it um let's see D Sebastian is that is that Dagmar did I get that right good morning good morning Inova says, funny that most of us sewers are terrified of sewing buttonholes. I have a boucle jacket and blouse waiting. It's not the, it's, uh, oh, for me it was the, it's not the buttonholes, it was the buttons 
uh, or the press studs because you have to cut holes in your garment to then put the press studs in. And I think it's the same for the denim jacket that Andy's talking about. It's like proper jeans buttons. Um, that's another reason that I use those wooden ones on my turquoise jacket that I've just finished because it was meant that I didn't have to buy new buttons. I had them in my stash and also that um, it was slightly easier to do. <laughs> uh, Aunt V says, it's a shame you and the neighbours couldn't bombard the company with calls about the service so they would fix that issue. Um, actually, we got a phone, after the engineers had been on Thursday, we got a phone call from our neighbour who was just like, thank you, thank you so much. We've been complaining for years and they won't come out and you suddenly have got three engineers and like, you know, what's going on? But the end next door's internet was working so much better as well. So... Yeah, <laughs> I think it's because it's such a rural area and there's so few houses connected to it that it's not really a giant priority for them, but it is very annoying. Um, Julia says, what if you live in the fairy town? No, that, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work because um, of Wilson's other job as well, although obviously there are musicians not, are not working at the moment, which is really sad um the the place that wilson's been playing for 11 years it's been open for over 25 years it's actually where we first met for our first time that i ever met wilson um is as it has announced that it's closing it won't be reopening and it's just so so sad so sad has so many amazing times in that place so yeah but hopefully when it's not going back to normal. It's the new reality. When things come to the point where we can socialise closely again, he will want to be playing gigs. And that just means that he can't be, because he wouldn't be able to live on the Isle of Wight. There is a musician who he plays with that does live on the Isle of Wight. And um, he doesn't have a day job as well. So he tends to take gigs that are like abroad or further away and then go for a couple of days. But and then he stays up until the first ferry back in the morning. And it's just, yeah, not how Wilson would want to live, definitely. Um, Leslie says, hello, Sean and everyone. Hi, Leslie, how are you? Julie says, I'm currently making the Kelly Anorak as part of the Sheffield Social Anorak August. Nice. You'll, uh, it's a beautiful jacket. I really, really enjoyed making mine. And I have plans to make more. Um, Claudia says, hi from Florida. Are you wearing a cat print shirt? Yes, I'm wearing the little kitty cats and their eyes glow in the dark, although I have never worn it enough for it to charge up and then worn it in the dark to see that, but apparently it's eyes glow in the dark. Um, Andy says it is indeed. Ilova says that was a beautiful jacket. Love the colour. Thank you. Dagmar says, yes, it's Dagmar. Just voted on your amazing fabric choice for September. I saw Dagmar, thank you. Both of them will be used. Um, both of them probably will be shirt dresses of some description or another, although I have five meters of both, so I'm hoping I can get two garments out of them, unless I make a maxi dress. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited about, about that. Um, Claudia says, my dream is to own a sewing machine that does auto buttonholes to do, I do them on my machine, but it's hard to make them perfect, yeah. I'm so spoiled with this thing. And we were talking the other day, somebody said that they embroider their buttonholes as well. And that's a genius idea too. Um, Aunt Beast creation says, yes, that's, oh, that is sad. Yeah, it's really sad. It's really sad. Like um, the last time I went to see Wilson play, it's a, it's a place called Roadhouse. The last time I went to see him play at Roadhouse wasn't, it was last October. And I just, I didn't go, um, in November, December, January or February when I was up there because I was like, oh, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll still be there. It'll still be there. And it was, it was, yeah, and it's, it's, yeah. So the last time I saw Wilson play there was, he was playing bass as well, which is not my favourite. Like, you know, still looks hot on stage playing a guitar, but yeah, I prefer it when he plays lead guitar. Um, so Dagmar says, I live in densely populated area and the internet service is still spotty and customer service equals yikes. Oh no, that's not good. Claudia says, I love the cat print, thank you. Julie says, did you know that the white in the Isle of Wight is an old English word for man? So technically you guys have two island mans. Oh, <laughs> weird. I didn't know that. I knew it used to be called Vectus in Roman times. It was, 
the, um, the vector file. Um, and that's where vectors quilters comes from. Right, I'm gonna finish my tea, which I have nearly done, and then um, start on these sleeves. Hmm. Okay, sleep time. Sleeve time. Now, I think I probably ought to try and hem them now, wouldn't I? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Before I put them on the dress. This fabric is beautiful, but every now and again, it's slightly pulled and it's gone a bit white and it's really pulled at the bottom of my zip, which is really annoying. But again, that's right around my bum area. So if anyone's staring that close, I mean, cause you can't, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. A little bit there. But if anyone gets that close that they can see that, then they're, they're too close. And so I shall tell them. Uh, right, yes, what was I saying? Oh, we're getting a bit warm. Um, hemming, should I hem these first? I probably ought to, oughtn't I? How am I gonna hem these? I don't know if I've done these particularly well. I think I, I think I haven't thought them all the way through, but I think they're going to be pretty. Um, Julie says, I'll leave for now, but see you soon, peeps. Have a nice afternoon, Julie. Villova says, Sean, what's your fabric, favourite fabric to work with and why? Just curious. Hmm. Um, to work with, I think cotton lawns and stable fabrics that behave themselves well and do as they are told and press well and don't take too much finagling, but to wear viscose and silk and slippery and drapey fabrics. Um, but they're a pain. They're not, they're not a pain. They just, they just take a different kind of wrangling to, to make them work the way that you want them to. But I, I, I'm much, I love wearing those. Having said that, I like wearing cotton lawn as well. So that doesn't really help, does it? Sorry. <laughs> uh, Lynn says, what fabric is again, Sean, you used, used to make the dress? This is a viscose crepe that I got from the textile center. And it was one of their ones, which I think was like um, a design, like a high street had had a, an amount printed and there was an, an amount left but I snapped it up because I thought it was really pretty. Uh, Nimoy says, I decided to stop procrastinating on my bastion clots. The lightweight tensil shifted terribly while cutting. So I'm not sure how successful the result will be. Need to sew and see. Um, good luck with that. Good luck. I hate shifty fabrics when they don't behave, but they're so nice to wear when, they, when you're finished with them. Uh, Ilova says, thank you. Right, okay, so let's... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a line of stitching around the hem as a guide for pressing and then I can press up the hems and I think I will hand stitch these. Oh, I will put my jewel feed down. So let's do that. Right. Yeah, we can. There we go. I don't know if any of you guys follow Best Dressed. Uh, it's a YouTube channel and she she does do some sewing and altering every now and again. And she's just made herself a dress from scratch. And she she hasn't done that for ever, I don't think. And she decided to pick silk charmeuse to work with for the first dress from scratch. And it's a really beautiful dress. Um, 
But uh, yeah, yes. I think I did the same thing when I first got back into sewing. I went to, I think I've told you guys this story. I went to John Lewis and picked out silk to make a skirt with, thinking that's a great idea. It wasn't. It was a horrible idea. with the chat. Alison says, I would do a rolled hem on the sleeve and I think you can do this on the overlocker. Yeah, yeah, uh, I could do that on the overlocker. I don't have the right colour thread for this. Um, I am doing a rolled hem. I'm just doing it um, in a slightly more uh, labour intensive way. Uh, Louise says, good afternoon. Hope everyone is well. Hi Louise, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, if you watch the... Um, the waffles the other night you know that I've kind of decided on this this one for my goldfish fabric I'm gonna I'm gonna do this skirt and bodice but sleeveless like this one with the darts on the inside um, but I need to retrace and make a muslin and so I am going to use this fabric that I got from the textile center I think we still have some actually um, but it was three pounds a meter, so I bought five meters of it for wearable muslin fodder, and I think it's going to look really cool. So that can go over there, as can that. And as Dagmar said, I put up the vote on Patreon today for the fabrics for next month's sew along, which is going to be on the shirt dress, which I am looking forward to. I did a um, rolled hem on my overlocker for a chiffon evening gown that I made for last November. And I really liked how it turned out. So I do like that finish for sure, Alison. I just don't have exactly the right thread for this one. So I'm going to do this type. Uh, where do we get to? Louise says that will look fantastic in the fish fabric. I think so too. I'm very grateful to you guys for um, kind of putting new ideas in my head as well. Um, I'm definitely going to make the 6554, the Butterick Wrap Ruffly Dress, out of the turquoise rayon. That's going to look beautiful. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. Pretty, pretty sure that's what I'm going to do with that one. So I need to sew around this one. Then fix this fabric there. Okay. Um, Alison says, I have that pattern. I had to get it off of Etsy as it's out of print. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I've been doing a couple of sew alongs for patterns that are out of print. Like the 5951 is out of print. Um, Lynn says, what was the channel called again that you mentioned that's on YouTube? It's called Best Dressed. I think she's in her very early 20s called Ashley. She's just moved to New York from LA having done a film degree. So the editing, oh, got something in my eye. The editing of her videos is brilliant. But yeah, <laughs> silk chamois for like your first, and it's like, a, it's not even, a, it wasn't even an easy dress. So. Although she did lump all sewing channels in with the Sewing Moms on YouTube, which 
annoyed me a little bit. <laughs> she was like, thanks, sorry, mums of YouTube. And it was just like, okay. That's not fair. <laughs> Okay, so I've done my line of stitching, which is going to be my pressing guide for pressing up the raw edge of the sleeves, if I can get the thread off, to then press it up again, to then, I think I'm going to hand stitch these in place, you know, um, but I now need to put in the gathering stitches to the top of the sleeve so that I can set the sleeve in. Those in. Not that far over. Okay. And I'm actually only gonna put the one where I'm gathering stitches in, which is not what you're meant to do. Um, but this fabric doesn't recover well from having um, the, the holes in it. So I didn't want to put more holes in it on the, especially on where it's going to be visible. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I meant to have two for security, but we'll see. It's not like this is, this is not, um, it's not going to be a gathered sleeve cap. Is this just to help ease in the fullness at the top of the sleeve? There we go. That's okay. Kim says, hi everyone, a bit late to the party. Hope I haven't missed much. Not too much, Kim, not at all. Took me about half an hour to start sewing today. And he says, I asked about setting up a public account on Insta the other day and can't remember who said it would get loads of random men following me. Yep, blocked quite a few so far. Yeah, I mine's public and I don't really get very many random guys message me. But I mean, I'm not complaining at all. But yeah, weird. Uh, Nimoy says, off to have lunch, back in a bit, have fun and misbehave. <laughs> Thank you, Nimoy. Lilova says, have a great day, ladies, have to go. Thank you for joining us. Right, I'm going to move you around to the ironing board and we're going to press up the hem of the sleeves. Got my denim skirt on again today. Love this thing. Very happy with it. Although somebody did comment on Facebook, the other, uh, Instagram the other day, that it made me look bottom heavy. I think that's just the fact that I am bottom heavy. <laughs> it's like, really? Really? The, um, the weather today is definitely making me think about my autumn sewing plans a lot, as is having put up the vote on Patreon for uh, for next month's sew along, because I, I think you guys will remember when I organised my fabric stash with you guys, I showed you guys the capsule collection that I'd put together from my fabric stash. And um, yeah, I really want to get started on that.
don't get me wrong, I'm really enjoying making all the stuff that I said I was going to make in August. Very much so. But with today's weather, it's just making me think, oh, I want to make the long sleeve dresses and I want to make the coats and I want to make the comfy things. Mum is currently knitting me another heart and cardigan. So like the one I'm wearing today in Tuckway, she's knitting me a navy one, which is going to go really well with that capsule collection. So right, yeah, I'm excited. Very excited. I kind of messed up there. I'm a little bit off with where I was folding it because the thread blends in perfectly to the fabric which is good but it did mean I couldn't see what I was doing so I've pressed the edge up once gonna do that again uh where do we get to Dagmar says the guy requests come in waves from time to time I just block them and he says how rude um Dagmar says on Instagram Christine says just had a few randoms follow me um you don't have to look up at the message just delete and just delete and then delete from your followers yeah louise says the denim skirt looks good on you learning stitches says i have the same problem with random guys following my page i just block them can't believe how rude people can be i think that denim skirt's very flattering on you <laughs> it just made me giggle because she was like it makes you look bottom heavy but that's me this is you know like that's me there's i, I I, this is my shape. I am. I mean, obviously, these make me look slightly wider because they do stick out. But that then makes this look smaller. So it's just like, OK. Um, it's yet another reason that I've kind of stopped wanting to wear skinny jeans because they just massively emphasise just how big that area is. And I don't it's not. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And there are some girls that look amazing in it. It's just, I just don't feel comfortable. So that's why I've stopped really wearing skinny jeans and kind of like gotten out of my, I want to make all the skinny jeans because I just won't wear them. I'm not saying never, I may change my mind. You never know. But for now, I should carry on making these kinds of skirts because I enjoy them a lot. Sal's here, good day. Sean and Peeps, hi Sal, how are you my lovely? Sal, did you see um, that Julian was on the Love to Sew podcast? It was the first time I've ever listened to um, that podcast, to be honest. It's just, I'm, I'm just not a podcast kind of girl, I don't think. Um, but it was a really interesting listen. And he's also, I don't know if you're already a member, but he's also got a Facebook group called So Manly, um, which you might enjoy uh, as a resource. I've joined it because it's not just for guys. Um, but yeah, I just um, thought you might uh, it might be of interest to you. I really enjoyed um, his episode. It was fun. Trying not to iron my fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna slip stitch that into place. Usually I would just top stitch that into place, but I'm gonna slip stitch the hem of this, and there's no other visible stitching on it. Like I, I um this sort of sleeve. The only other time that I've done this sort of sleeve is on my eve dresses, and I don't mind having visible stitching 
on the sleeves of that because you have to visibly stitch the binding around the, the whole front neckline. So I don't mind um, having visible stitching on the rest of the eave dress around the, the, the hems of the eave dress because there's visible stitching around the front entire front neckline and front edge of the dress. But with this one, there's going to be no other visible stitching. So I think hand finishing the hems on this is the right move to do. Oh, or if I was to machine finish the edge of the sleeves, then I would machine finish the hem on the skirt as well. Words are hard. Does anybody follow Evan and Caitlin? Um, Words are hard is one of their merchandise t-shirts. It's really funny. Um, they did a live stream the other day completely underwater from, the, um, from his, his mum and dad's swimming pool, which was really impressive. Like they built the, the container for all of the equipment so that they were completely self-sufficient. It was just, yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> I mean, I didn't watch the live stream itself, but I watched the prep for it and how they set up for it. I enjoy their channel. They just made their supervisor, Jube, a cat galaxy bed with one of those clear acrylic kind of like half semicircles so that when she sits in it, they can see her paws and her toe beans. And they now, they make me want to make all the resin things. I'd be terrible at it, but they do make me want to make all the resin things. Okay. Slightly singeing my fingers here. ever so slightly singeing my fingers. but pressed so I can sew those later but I'm now going to attach them to the dress so back round okay spin you back round catch up with the chat Louise says I go by if I like it and I think it will look okay I will okay in it I wear it yeah same I think you know uh, we were having a conversation the other day, actually, about whether uh, flattering as a word has become a little bit taboo, hasn't it? That because just because one person perceives a particular silhouette as flattering does not then necessarily mean to say that everybody of that shape should only wear that silhouette. That's kind of not how it's meant to work and you need to wear clothing that you feel comfortable in and comfortable doesn't necessarily mean to say that you your you have to your body has to look good in it you have to feel good in it that's the that's the really important point and um yeah I thought it was quite interesting that flattering has kind of become this four-letter word Bit of excess there so uh yeah i i i sometimes wear things that are not necessarily the most flattering for my body shape but i wear them because i like how i feel in them and how i look in them and that's the important part i think 
So, yeah, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Supervisor. Cleaning in my sleeves. Um, Sal says, just hopped into bed to get warm. And it sounds good, but sounds so manly. Um, Facebook group and says, I'm late because I was doing some love crafty and arts. Nice. Jojo is here. Morning, everyone. It's still for me, lazy Sunday, and I only woke up about an hour ago. Good morning, Jojo. Princess Wade is here. Hello, everyone. Hi, Princess Wade. And Lottie's here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Lottie. And Learning Stitcher says, I completely agree. If you feel good in it, wear it. It's what you, it's, that's what I do. And Lynn says, yes, I agree with you, Sean. Yeah, flattering has kind of become, I, I, I don't, everyone, I, I've said this before. I actually, um, I rewatched my kind of little rant that I had in February, I think it was, about other people's opinions and whether I needed to hear other people's opinions of me if they were negative and I stand by what I said back then I don't think that I mean obviously everybody is entitled to their opinion positive negative or otherwise my but I don't think that um just because you have an opinion means that you need to tell the person that you have a uh, have an opinion about especially if it's negative you can completely think it that's you know freedom of expression and choice and all those things you you can think what you like but just because you think something does not mean to say that you have the right to then say that to the other person um, especially if it's negative and I mean I haven't received negative comments in a long old while from anyone really which has been quite nice there's been the odd one or two here and there like I say the, <laughs> the, face, the Instagram comment saying that this skirt made me look bottom heavy um, you know, fine. But, uh, yeah, negative opinions of other people really shouldn't be any of their business. You shouldn't tell them. And I'll, I'll say it again, like I said in that video, I have, there's lots of stuff out there that I don't like and people make that I'm not a fan of. But I um, I keep that to myself because me telling them that I don't like the thing that they've made and spent time and money and effort making is not constructive it's not helpful and it's not any of their business really um what I think about them like RuPaul says other people's opinions of me are none of my business and that is kind of meaning to say you shouldn't be telling other people your opinion of them really um, but, you know, again, that's a quite a controversial topic. And I got quite a few people back then telling me that I shouldn't be bothered by other people's opinions. And you that's easier said than done, especially when you have a lot of them coming at you all at once. But, um, yeah, I think it's can, <laughs> it's 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 um, it's it's interesting. You should you you. If you're invited to give constructive criticism, constructive criticism has been asked for, then that's a different thing. But just telling somebody that you don't like what they're wearing, no, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> not that any of you guys do, not that I'm saying that any of you guys do that. And, and need, but yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, where did we get to? Uh, Charlie says, completely agree with you but being permanently in a wheelchair I am mainly looking at tops and leggings and Alison says my pincushion which is the same as yours finally arrived I waited for a month to get it oh, I'm so glad it arrived I'm so glad that the parcel arrived back to you as well yay yeah, it's been on quite an adventure hasn't Alison <laughs> um Natalie let me know I like I said I I've sent the I sent the photograph of the receipt for the customs fees that I paid for it um, let me know if you need any of that for your complaint with Australia Post and I can send you the original email and things like that, Alison, if that helps with the complaint, let me know. Natalie says, we live in a world where women have to become small to get respect and it's just 
it just be appropriate if everyone stopped talking about another size or shape? Yep. Crystal's here. Good morning, Crystal. She says, good morning, Sean from Maryland. I don't get the whole flattering thing. I don't wear what people think is flattering. I'm short, but I love maxis and dusters. I'm 45 and I wear what I want. I love your style, Crystal. I always enjoy seeing whatever you put up on Instagram. It always makes me smile. Jojo says, if I like it, then I wear it, but mostly because... I want to be comfy. Sorry, my typing fingers haven't worked yet. <laughs> Aren't working yet. Christine says, I'm dressing more how I want to now rather than how I feel I should be dressing. Natalie says, if one doesn't have flattering things to say, one should shut the F up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Charlie says, never be negative. I absolutely believe that. Yeah, I think it, it, I think it impacts the person saying the thing as much as it impacts the person who's hearing the thing about themselves like um yeah Rachel Lynn says bottom heavy is that a bad thing I like my big old butt good morning all yeah I mean that's the other thing I do I don't mind my shape I don't mind that I have a big butt <laughs> I like the hourglass nature that it gives me I balance things out and um, but it was yeah it was it was <laughs> again it's somebody else's opinion of me and I didn't need to know I've deleted the comment because it was just like I'm not gonna leave that up there like no I, I I have the ability to edit my world and it's not that I'm censoring the comments and it's not that I am trying to portray that only you know like only positive I, I only ever get positively amazing glowing praise that's not what I was trying to achieve with that it was just that it was something that was like I mean, there were, you know, she she was nice about the top, but just said that the bottom was it's just like. Oh, oh. JJ says opinions are like rectums; everyone has one, but just some, but they're not something to put out there publicly just because you feel you should. <laughs> nice, Una's here. Hey everyone, I'm cleaning again. Busy day again. We're setting up for my podcast, so probably won't get to so until this evening. Uh, re-opinions remember to be kind says it all really yes definitely Lottie says I can say I don't care what others think but I'm not quite there yet more therapy to go yeah I mean that's that's the other thing isn't it it's like people it's like oh you know if you put your stuff out and not not just me but if you put your things out there on Instagram or if you put it out there on YouTube if you put it out there on Facebook you're ask you're inviting criticism you're inviting people's negative opinions and it's like unless specifically asked for no you're not you're sharing something that you're proud of and that you've made if you're specifically asking for feedback and and constructive criticism that's a different thing but you're not putting it out there for people to go oh I hate that that's and and then as I said as well you're one person and that opinion is coming from one person but if you've got like 50 people all saying the same thing at you that's very overwhelming and you need to think about that when you say things. Is it kind? Is it constructive? Is it helpful? And if it's none of those things, there's no point. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Caroline says opinions are like buttholes. They don't need airing. <laughs> yeah. You and Jojo are on a, on a theme there. Charlie says karma can really bite you. Mm-hmm. Sal says, as a man, I'm extremely careful what I say about a woman's appearance online and in real life. I mean, it's not just as a man, Sal. I think it's as a human being. Everybody just needs to be mindful of the things they say to other people. Hi. Kathy says, my feeling is it's your body. Wear what you want. And spend. I spend most of my time in scrubs and at home it's T-shirts and jeans. My friends won't go out of the house without makeup on heels. Yeah, I mean, that used to be me before I became allergic to makeup. I, I I think from the age of about 17, 16, 17, I, maybe a little bit earlier, actually, I wouldn't go out without a full face of makeup on because I didn't feel confident without it. It was like a form of armour. It was a form of self-expression, but also making myself feel more confident. And I wouldn't, I mean, for my friend, it was the other way around. She didn't mind no scrap of, a scrap of makeup on, but her hair had to be perfect. And for me, I, you know, my hair could be super greasy and, and slicked back, but I needed to have makeup on because that was what made me feel confident. Um, and that's completely changed, obviously, now. But, yeah, it's what makes you feel happy. 
I mean, within, within the realms of human decency as well. I mean, it, and, you know, if you'd like to walk around naked, there are places that you can do that, but you probably shouldn't go to the supermarket like that kind of thing. So, you know, you know. although I'm sure that someplace there is a supermarket where you can do that. Um, Alison says, I have been told by Australia Post that because it's Royal Mail fault that you will have to lodge an official complaint with them and claim the cost of the postage. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Cool. Send me all the send me all the details and I shall I shall get I shall try and get that done. Um, Lottie says it's your space online. You can curate it how you want. Yes, and I think that with I mean I used to I used to leave negative comments up because I didn't want to be seen to be censoring anyone, but it's also my happy space my corner of the internet and I've started deleting negative comments now because if I do go back to a video I don't want to see those kind of things or if I go back to a photo I'd, it, it, taint, it taints the kind of the whole space that that whole space for me so that's why I've been deleting them and as as you said it's my corner of the internet I can do what I like with it Kathy says, we get strange looks. I'm so casual and she's so fancy. <laughs> Alison says, wear what you want if it looks great on you. I live in tracky dacks and warm tops whilst I am at home and I do like to dress up a bit when I go into town. See, that's the other thing. Like, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago that somebody came on and said, oh, you're dressed up for the stream or do you wear this all the time? And, uh, you know, as you guys know, I tend to dress up all the time, but it's not dressing up in my mind it's wearing the clothes that I've made and that I love um I mean I have some evening gowns like a red silk dress that I'm not going to wear during the day because that's just not that's just too much even for me but I do enjoy I do enjoy making you know pretty dresses and I enjoy wearing them so and if I only wore them when I was leaving the house I would constantly be in tracksuits um which I did for a while and it's it, it made me feel not as great as I feel when I put my fancy, my, they're not fancy, but I put my pretty dresses on. So yeah. Um, Rachel says, what are you saying today? My daughter is learning to put makeup on. It's fun to watch her. Oh, cute. I am finishing off my sweetheart dress. I have got one sleeve pinned in, just about. Just need to pull the gathering threads on this side and just finish pinning this in. And it's, it's not even gather, it's just, I just need to slightly ease this side in just a little bit so there's going to be no gathers in the top of the sleeve cap but there is just a little bit of excess room which I'm easing in um Charlie says, I used to visit a hospice and one lady was absolutely thrilled when I noticed she had crazy socks. She wore, wore a wacky pair every time I saw her after that. Oh, lovely. Self-expression. That's what clothing is, isn't it? It's a form of self-expression. And you should all be, feel free to express yourselves however you like. And that's the thing. I'm not saying that people who have negative opinions or don't like something, I'm not entitled to those opinions. What I'm saying is I just don't think that the person that that opinion is a, a, a aimed at needs to hear about it if it is negative. Um, unless they've specifically asked for constructive criticism, and again, that's a different thing. Uh, let's see, Natalie says, uh, whoa, I went away for 10 minutes and now we're talking about nudist beaches, what did I miss? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Alison says people will criticize online, but wouldn't dare do it straight to your face. They are wimps. Yeah. Uh, Charlie says, I used to try and find something individual that I loved about everybody I met. Actually, I still do. Yeah, that's a really nice thing to do. Because everybody has that one unique little thing. And I mean, everybody's completely unique, really. Noelia says, hi, missed lots of live streams because of either having guests or being away. I've been watching you while my daughter Sophia has been straightening my hair. Ooh, pretty. And um, hello, Noelia. I, I saw that you, um, sorry, Noelia. I saw that you, you said that you'd missed a few because um, you on on the Peeps group. But 
Glad you could come and hang out with us today. It's very nice to see you. Noelia says, I'm going to carry on watching while I'm cooking, but the outlaws are here, so I'll have to stop after. I agreed with this line of conversation. It's like I say, it's nice to have you and it's nice that you're getting to see people. Right, let's get this sleeve in, shall we? Need to remember to turn stitch length back to regular from the gathering stitch length. I've done that so many times. Put the gathering stitches in at the top of the sleeve cap, set the sleeve in or pin the sleeve in, come to sew it and not turn the stitch length back down and be like, why is this not working? So sometimes. Um, Charlie says, by the way, I really love the fabric you're using. Thank you. As I say, one of the bargains that I picked up from the textile center, they have not really had very many, they're not putting very many rayons up for sale at the moment, or like um, viscose is up for sale, which is sad. Although I still managed to get around about 137 pounds worth of fabric in my basket the other day. I haven't bought it. I'm fantasy shopping. I'm trying to be good and not buy any fabric at the moment. Um, there are some bits and pieces that I will need um, in the future, like lining fabrics and things like that. Like I'm completely out of white cotton lawn again after making those two 8577s. So I need to buy myself some more of that, which I will hopefully do soon. But I'm trying to not buy more fashion fabric unless Rachel sends me photos of silk, which she frequently does. Um, but I am trying to be good because I have a giant stash and I need to shop that more. And that's what I did with this. Um, and I'm really pleased that I did because it's a really pretty fabric. It's going to make a really pretty dress. Okay. It's always a little bit fiddly doing this bit. And I always lose a few pins. That's why I put so many in. Sometimes. I, I have tried this on with the without sleeves in it and I really liked how that looked um, but I, I'd need to either do an all in one facing uh, or fully line the dress which is not out of the realms of possibility quite a few of you guys were saying that I ought to make the goldfishes into this dress and I'm not adverse to that but the thing is because it's a facing, I don't like doing it with lighter fabrics because you can see the facing underneath it, so it would need to be fully lined if I did it with my goldfish fabric, which I don't want to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the 9077 pattern that I've chosen for that uh, goldfish fabric. I think that's gonna look really pretty. And I'm really glad that I've now got the impetus to go back and um, sort of futz with that pattern because like I said I've made that once before and I really like how it turned out but I French seamed the whole thing I mean at one point I hated how it was turning out um, and I was going to not finish it because um, I put the collar on as per the pattern and I hated it absolutely hated it um, so I ended up taking the collar off and putting on a collar and collar stand because it was just a collar on the on the on as the pattern is, which I don't like. And it's the same with the brewery air shirt. That's just got that's got no collar stand, and I've discovered that that's a preference of mine to have a collar stand in a in a collared shirt. So I'm glad that I did fuss with the olive green or the khaki green or the military green um, 9077 that I have made because I will make it again now. Okay. Oopsie. Oh, I missed a pin. So, cut off all these threads. And I'll wait to trim this until the other side is in because this this fabric does fray whilst you're looking at it. Um, let's see. Charlie says fantasy shopping is very is the very best. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. 
Alison says, do you still ever buy from Minerva? I do. I do. Um, the few things that they've I've had from them recently, or the, the fabrics they've been putting up recently, the ones that I like are sort of more expensive, um, sort of art gallery rayons and things like that. And I, 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 need to, I need to start thinking more about how I'm spending my money um, because I need to be slightly more responsible with it. Um, <laughs> so not buying 35 pound a meter pineapple silk as much as I might love it. And um, because, you know, I do eventually uh, want to move in with Wilson and I want to be able to fully kind of like 50, 50 pull my weight rent and bills wise, which I can do at the moment, but it would leave me zero money for anything else. Um, so I am trying to be a little bit more responsible. <laughs> and I have, as you guys know, a giant fabric stash, which is full of beautiful fabric. And, you know, it's not like it's even fabrics that I bought ages ago and I've fallen out of love with. I, I really like everything I've got in my stash. And the few things that I wasn't overly in love with, I have, as you know, purged. And... Yeah, I need to start. I need to start sewing it all. So I need to shop my stash more. It is still a lot of fun to virtually shop, though. And um, I'm not going to stop doing that, especially when people keep sending me photographs of beautiful fabric. <laughs> um, but yeah, the ones that I've been lusting after on Minerva Crafts recently have all been much more expensive art gallery fabrics which I'm not saying they're not worth it they're just more than that I'm willing to spend on rayon at the moment especially when I know I can go to somewhere like the textile center and get it for sort of six seven pounds a meter as opposed to 17 18 pounds a meter I think my only exception to that has been Lady McElroy prints which I have bought on rayons at 15 pounds a meter and that is because I am absolutely in love with the print. And it's again, not, not, not in love with the art gallery ones. Totally, totally think that they are beautiful. There's a lot that I would still really like. But I'm trying to be good. Trying to be good. I do pay rent here and bills, by the way, as well. I know some. I, I had an email from somebody saying that I was a spoiled princess and that everybody gives, gets to live the way that I do and with their parents granting my every whim. <laughs> I don't pay a lot of rent, but I do pay rent, which is increasing all the time as my income increases. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but no, I haven't, I haven't bought anything from another craft for a while. Patricia says the machine sounds a bit loud. No louder than usual. It's 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 behaving itself. Don't give it ideas. <laughs> Sal says again. The only negative I have on your appearance, Shana, is that seeing you in person after all these years. Oh, thank you, Sal. Uh, Dagmar says fantasy shopping at night time weirdly turns up at my doorstep in real life. Later, I wonder how that happens and who pushed the buy button. Lol. I had one when I was in uh, last the beginning of last year when I wasn't very well and I was taking lots of new medications and I had one fantasy fugue shopping state actually materialise on my doorstep a couple of days later and I was just like, I don't remember buying that. <laughs> Genuinely no, no clue. Uh, Nimue says, I'm back. Did you get up to any fun shenanigans? Also, I bought my fan because I'm liquefying and ironing is next. Oh, no, nothing worse. Um, Aunt B's creation says, lols. And Alison says, I so want the new Lady McElroy, McElroy print that has the Venice print. Spotlight has some gorgeous vintage style floral linseed viscose that I'm wanting. Ooh, nice. See, yeah. It's like when Alex sent me the thing about the uh, Vogue patterns from Spotlight, I had to be good. There were so many that I wanted. Three pounds for a Spotlight, uh, for a Vogue pattern is a really good deal. Um, 
but it's just no space. And again, I haven't made everything that I have currently. So I need to, I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm never going to buy fabric again or never going to buy patterns again, because we all know that that's a giant lie. Um, and I totally will. But I am trying to be a little bit mindful about what I'm buying and spending now. And um, also because hopefully we'll move soon, although we've had a bit of a disaster, which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, and I'm going to want some money to kind of redecorate my room wherever we end up. So, um, yeah, we had a bit of a roller coaster on Friday. Um, as you guys, I think I told you guys, we had a buyer for this place. They'd had surveys done. They spent, you know, you know they spent nearly a thousand pounds having this place checked out with all the different things that they need to have checked out. And um, then they saw this place and then put their house on the market. So they decided to sell their house because they'd fallen in love with this house. They hadn't even had their house on the market before this. And they'd had a, an offer in, but then that fell through. And then they had another offer in and our estate agent phoned us and was just like, we have a completed chain. The people that are buying their house have no ongoing chain. It's amazing. It's all done. It's sorted. Brilliant. And we were just like, yes. So dad's wrong. The estate agents that is um, representing the house that we want to buy and was let them know. And then 20 minutes later, we had a phone call from our estate agents and our buyers pulled out. And uh, yeah, so it went from, oh my God, everything's happening, instruct solicitors to we're back on the market, which as you can imagine is incredibly frustrating. So mum and dad have offered on their, uh, one, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth house that they put in an offer on. Um, and obviously then it's still up for sale depending on the chain. Um, we may or may not get it, but you know, there's, we've lost out on four houses because ours hadn't sold. And we were thinking, oh, it's all, you know, it's all done. It's all sorted. We'll be moving soon. And as I say, the, the buyer just changed their minds, which, you know, it's totally their prerogative to do. But it was frustrating because we'd been taken off the market. Nobody else was going to be looking around it. You know, the sold sign was out the front. It was... As I say, they'd had surveys done um, and for them to pull out at the last minute was really frustrating. So back on the market, looking for houses again. I mean, as I said to mum, you know, hopefully it's, it's all for a reason and the house that we really, really want, like dad even the minute that we got the news that the chain that, that their house had sold. We he was trying to get hold of the people that are, are going representing that house to see if that sale was still going through because we we're kind of hoping that somebody would have pulled out because we really really want that house. Um, but then, yeah, our buyer pulled out. Frustrating, very frustrating. I haven't checked the lottery though, so I might be a multimillionaire. And it's all a moo point, as Joey would say. So, yeah. Right. Oh, who else is reading or listening to Midnight Sun, Twilight from Ed Edward's? perspective mum and I are listening to it you wouldn't think I was a 40 year old one 41 year old 40 year old one woman what 41 year old woman would you I don't act like one That's, I've had that said to me a couple of times but you know what, what does a 41 year old woman act like I like what I like and I'm allowed to <laughs> right so first part of the sleeves is in now I need to trim down the seam allowance and now this I need to be really careful about because I've done this before and I've cut into the fabric of the sleeve and not the fabric not the seam allowance so I need to be careful um let's see um Christine says I'm sewing that at the moment Alison it's gorgeous meaning the Venice print I really want some of that 
I'm behaving, I'm behaving, I am behaving. Alison says, I want some of the Vogue patterns too, but I spent my pocket money on a just from super fit mannequin. Never mind, they come on special quite freak, quite regularly. Yeah, I'm going to take advantage another time if you guys, you or Alexandra, don't mind sending it over to me again. Uh, Sal says, sorry to hear that. Thank you, Sal. Lynn says, oh, Sean, that's terrible and disappointing for all of you. Alison says, how disappointing. Lottie says, oh, no, our buyer pulled out as well. Oh, no, Lottie. Um, Charlie says, house sales. We had a buyer pull out because we wouldn't take 60,000 less than the, at the last minute. The reason the surveyor found woodworm in the 1730s cottage. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, Christine says, oh, disappointing. And Caroline says, I have the book halfway through it. Yeah, apparently our, our estate agent, the lady who owns the estate agent, rang us the other day because she was so annoyed and frustrated and obviously wanted to try and reassure us. But she was just like, I, you know, we've had people offer the full asking price and get through to the, right to the last minute and then try and get the vendor to take sort of 10, 20,000 less because they've had it off the market for so long and they're trying to pull a fast one. It's like, you know, some, some of the things that people do is really underhanded. And she said she thinks that the this couple that were going to buy our house are actually going to end up staying where they are, even though they've just had a because they um the people that offered on their house made an offer under the asking price, and they were like, no, we need the full asking price, and um, the estate agent got them the full asking price, and uh, they were surprised, <laughs> and then um yeah the estate agent thinks that they're going to end up not selling at all and not moving and going to stay where they are so yeah frustrating frustrating I and mean, they were they're they're older than mum and dad they they live somewhere that they don't have very much garden and, and he wanted a garden and as, I, mean, I think they have a sea view where they are, but not like a brilliant, as, as an amazing sea view as we have here. Um, but yeah. More than a little frustrating. But like I say, I'm ever hopeful that I'm going to have a winning lottery ticket. And that way I can buy mum and dad whatever house they want. Or I can spend as much money as they need on this house to so that they can stay here if they'd like to. So that would be fun. It would be nice to spoil and treat them one for once. <sighs> Where did I get to? Rachel says, no, I'm about to start a new book today, Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. Wait, that's the second book, Red Rising. Ah, cool. Caroline says, when we sold mums, they tried to beat us down. We said, nope, it's going back on the market. The buyer blinked before we did. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand. I, I think that's really underhanded, trying to hold people hostage, having gone through a certain process having offered a certain amount of money to then try and negotiate down after the fact. I think that's um, underhanded. Um, Alison says to Christine, I just love it and Spotlight have restocked many of the designs. Ooh, Anna's here. Hey, yeah, I'm here now. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Anna. How are you? Uh, and Christine says, Hubs is home, see you later, or catch up in the week. Lovely, Christine. Thank you for joining us. I'm concentrating so I don't mess this up. Ask me how I know. <laughs> okay, that's one side done. To the other side. I'm not trying to try and not agitate this too much because as I say I don't this frays like a just looking at it and it's fraying. Lottie says I am so angry ours pulled out because our estate agent had lied to them about something that we had repeatedly told them not to lie about. Oh no that's awful.
yeah i was i was always a bit like skeptical about why estate agents got such a slimy reputation but some of them are bloody awful aren't they Then says, if you don't mind me asking, Sean, why do you want to move from where you are now? Um, because we live on a hill and we live on a very steep hill. Our back garden is is like this and dad is not physically able to cope with it anymore. Um, and he loves gardening. He spends his entire day outside, rain or shine, cold or sunny. So we we need to move somewhere that is going to be future proof for both of my parents health and mobility going forward so that's why we're moving Concentration face again, peeps. Although if I do mess this up, it won't be going in the bin or like the recycling like the last one did, I will patch it. Okay, success. Seams are trimmed, now they need to be pressed. So back over to the ironing board. Um, let's catch up with the chat. Caroline says to Lottie, if you can prove it, sue the beggars. Lottie says they're claiming it's because of a he said, she said, despite being told, despite being the exact lie we were told when we bought. Oh no. Uh, Caroline says, if you ever have to put in writing that this fact shouldn't be perpetuated and the seller knows you might and the seller knows it, you might be able to. I used to work for conveyancing solicitors. Oh, interesting. Charlie says, my daughter was moving into a new flat, uni let tomorrow. She happened to ring the managing agent yesterday and then we just did two days to go. They told her it needs building work. Oh my God. Um, they are offering a tiny flat much further from the university. It's not really good. It's not in a really good area. Oh no. How, oh yeah. Uh, Nimoy says, we were so lucky to have a single story bungalow when dad broke his leg last year. Stairs wouldn't be good for him more than a year later. I hope things will finally all fall in line for you soon. Thank you, Nimoy. Right, let's just move that round. Okay, turn the iron on. Yeah, it's been a it's been a real roller coaster because, as I say, mum and dad have offered on five houses now. Oh, hello! Just talking boobs there. Hi. Yeah, five houses now that they've seen that they liked, and um, you know, I've only actually gone and looked around one of them, um, and I. I was, you know, every time it's been like, you're going to have this room and this is going to be the sewing room. It's like, thank you. And then sort of planning how I would put those rooms together and decorate and all that good stuff. And then obviously stuff's happened and then we're on to the next one. So, yeah, I've had many, many, many good ideas for decorating these places. And I'm looking forward to setting up a new sewing room and kind of changing things about. I would do storage very differently, very, very differently. Um, and I'm going to do storage very differently in when we go to the new place. And I'm looking forward to doing that with you guys as well. I know you guys are looking forward to the moving vlogs and the new house and the empty tours. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I love watching those kind of things on YouTube. 
like people I don't even follow particularly but I'm nosy and I like seeing other people's houses so I watch a lot of those kind of videos so I think I was looking forward to getting to do that with you guys and showing you around the new place and that kind of stuff but uh yeah not for a while yet not for a while yet we'll get there it'll be it'll be fine One done. One to go. Where did I get to with the trap chat? Jojo says, frustrating. I'd have wanted to throttle the buyer who was basically trying to hold me to ransom the cheeky beggars. Yeah. Mum was a little less charitable than that as well. Um yeah i mean they you know this is one of the most stressful things that anybody can do isn't it and it, it is they it's not just a cliche it really is one of the most stressful things that you can do it's not fun but never mind okay Where did we get to? Christine says, bonjour peeps, bonjour Christine. <laughs> Natalie says, me and my boy for moving back to my mum's come November to rustle up some deposit operation own our own house 2021. Ooh, exciting. Where did I get to? Lottie says, thank you to Natalie. And Charlie says, cannot wait to see your new place. Hoping it will be very soon. Yee. I think, I think mum and dad are just like, now that they've made the decision, they just want to, they just want to be on and getting on and done with it. They've always had, they've always been really lucky as well. Whenever they've been selling houses in the past, it's usually been because of a job move. And because it was executive positions, the companies would either buy the house themselves and then sell it so that we didn't have to worry about it. Or we've, we've just, you know, we've, we've literally, they've always been sort of like the first couple of people to come around and look at the house. They've always bought wherever we've been. This is the first time it's taken a particularly long period of time to sell a house. And um, we did end up, we had another buyer right at the beginning who came and looked around and stayed till mum and dad came home and offered the money on the spot for the house and then pulled out. So yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's been a frustrating experience. Right, put the needle back. Take the scissors out from under the dress because I can just see myself. 
catching something by accident and that would be bad. Right, let's. So, second part of my French scene, finish these off. And then we can start hand sewing. Okay. All right, where did I get to? Um, Lottie says, uh, Jojo says to Lottie, I know that's awful. And then Natalie says, thanks, Lottie. Eventually. Eventually. I've got the um, song from the video I put up the other day in my head. Not the not the one that went up yesterday, but the one from the day before. Home again. Number one is in. Should we get all of the threads? Now I think I'm going to leave the gathering threads in, I am, but there's a little bit of fall off. Yeah, said so this stuff frays the minute you look at it. Right, that one's done. Let's do the other side. Where do I get to with the chat? Heather says, hi, Sean. I've been listening since the beginning while sewing a dress. Hello, everybody from New Zealand. Hi, Heather. Welcome. And Lynn says, why do you French seam most of your garments rather than overlock? Just interested more than anything. Um, it was because I was terrified of my overlocker for the longest time, Lynn. I had it for five years before I started using it. And I was just scared of it. So I learned different methods for finishing seams, bias binding, Hong Kong finishes, uh, French seaming, that kind of thing. Um, so I didn't have to use my overlocker and I just prefer how it looks. Um, again, that's a personal preference. There is absolutely nothing wrong with overlocking the insides of your garments. I just prefer how French seams look. And then having said that, um, the other day when I was making my 8577s, I pinked the edges of the insides of my um, skirt seams because it was fully lined so you weren't ever going to see that bit and I actually sew the seams of the 8577 with a smaller seam allowance because of the size that I've traced I was hoping that I'd be able to take them in later but obviously it makes, it makes um, French seams make altering things a little bit more difficult not impossible but just a little bit more difficult um, but it is purely preference and literally having been scared of my overlocker, which I now love, although I haven't used it for a while. 
um, but I just now tend to make knit garments on my overlocker and woven garments on my machine. And it, like I say, it is just personal preference. It's, you know, I just prefer how this looks and I like doing it. So yeah, that's why. <laughs> are in I'm glad I didn't try and rush through that the other night not that it would have taken me this long to, gosh, an hour and 45 minutes um to to do them if I hadn't been chatting at the same time to you guys but um yeah I had got to the point where I was seriously starving so I needed to, to go and eat right okay so my sleeves are in now I need to hand finish the hems on them which I'm going to do with you guys and then I need to tack the lining into uh, the the um what's it called facing there you go that's the word then I need to tack the facing into place as well so I'm going to do that with you guys and then we can start organizing my patterns Because that is a job. If I do go up to um, see Wilson in London, as I've mentioned, he lives in a studio as well and he works during the day. So I will need to have some kind of quiet occupation that I can do whilst he's working. And this would be a, the ideal thing to do um, if I did end up going up there. And it's because... Our internet's so bad down here that when he was here, he really struggled to work. So he may not be able to come down um, to see me again down here. So it might be a case of I have to go and see him. He's going to come. He's going to come and pick me up from somewhere outside of London so that I don't have to get onto the underground. Um, but I would have to get a train on the way up there. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Chris says hi from Adelaide. Hello, welcome. Cecilia says hello, lovely peeps. You are, hello, hello, Cecilia. And he says, my mum says I'm obsessed with French teams. I'm not blaming you, but lol. <laughs> I, it's just, it's one of those things. Like everybody has a preferred method of doing something. And I, I just really like how they look. Hang on. I know nobody but you guys and me, me are going to see the inside of my garments. But I just love that. I think it looks beautiful. So, you know, like, it makes me happy. And again, that's another point, isn't it? You do what makes you happy. So, yeah, right. Let's start sewing my, I'm gonna bring you a bit closer. I'm gonna just stab myself with a pin. Bring you a bit closer and tilt you down a little bit so you can kind of see why I'm yeah there we go uh where do we get to blue eyes Dante says good morning good morning Nimue says I can be real sensitive about the inside of garments being scratchy or tickling and French seams or lining are better for that than overlocked edges just another personal reason yeah I mean actually that's not something that I'd considered but I do get annoyed with certain finishes of ready to wear so I can imagine that I might as well with this but again French seams. Uh, Noel Noelia says, I love French seams too. They're called English seams in Spain. How funny. <laughs> uh, Cecilia says, yay for the patterns. Nicola says, I'm back. I did get visitors. Um, welcome back, Nicola. Noelia says, I'm off to have lunch and mingle with the in-laws. Bye, peeps. Thank you for joining us. 
Lottie says, really hope you managed to sort something out with him. Yeah, me too. We will. We will. We'll make, we'll make it work. It'll be fine. Andy says, yep, with you on that one. Jojo says, the Marocaine I'm sewing frays just by looking at it. It's a demon fabric that's wibbly wobbly to pin to death to hold it in place type fabric that is going to be a pig to work with but it's so pretty <laughs> there's a few of those I'm yeah uh there was one that I had uh, woven that just it was the chenille that I made a coat out of for a customer and it just frays the minute you look at it that one I overlocked all of the edges because I had to because otherwise it, they would have disintegrated and that was a fully lined garment so no one's ever going to see that but you know that it, overlocking definitely has its place uh, Lynn says, must admit, they do look very neat with French seam finishes. Thank you, Lynn. And again, I say this a lot now in my videos, um, purely and simply because I don't want to be seen to be saying, you must do things my way or no way. The lovely thing about sewing is that there are so many different ways of doing something to achieve the same end and if you enjoy one particularly over another you do you so I do say that a lot in my in my videos now just to, just to make sure that I that's the last thing that I want to do is come across like I'm telling people that they have to do it my way because it's the furthest thing from the truth Lottie says as in as in to do while there not that Wilson is the problem <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got that, Lottie. <laughs> the lovely Jennifer is here. Hello, Jennifer. She says, hello, gorgeous people. Cecilia says, I'm about, I'm all about the nice insides too. I've had too many ready-to-wear garments come apart to ever want to make anything that doesn't hold up. Yeah, feel you there. <laughs> Jojo says, and I've just discovered I've been sewing with air for five minutes. Is it too early for gin? No, totally not. It's like nearly two o'clock. Totally gin time on a Sunday, right? <laughs> Um, Jojo, uh, Jennifer says, I know to Jojo. Rachel Lynn says, it's never too early for Jin. <laughs> Good, right, okay, let's get some hand sewing done. So, yeah, my, as I've mentioned, I've put up my um, uh, fabric picks for the 9077 Sew Along on Patreon this morning, and I'm getting really excited about that collection. I can't wait to make it all because it's going to look beautiful and it's going to be like it's going to be the rest of the year sewing projects and I could break it down into you know September plans October plans but I want to do a really big video on look here are the 30 fabrics that I'm going to work with for the rest of the year and then kind of do updates about this is how it's going this is you know that kind of thing because I really, I really want to do a reveal at the end um, for all of the things. And I, I still do like monthly look what I've made videos, but I'm really excited about putting together a lookbook um, with all of the finished pieces and coordinating them all. And you know the different things, how the different things can work together, and how they've been, how how they, how I can wear them together, and. I'm just really excited about it all, especially now that the whole weather's disappeared here and I'm not, not wanting to make all the things to float around in. Like I'm looking at my plans next to me and I'm like, oh, I don't want to wear any of those now. I, want, I, nearly, I nearly put tights on this morning. I was that chilly. Right. I'm very excited. Very excited. And um, there's a German YouTuber I follow called Shirin Tara. I, and she's put up a lookbook today of the things that she wore this week. And She's been getting really creative with the transitions between outfits, which looks really cool. And, um, you know, it's giving me ideas of, and of how to kind of put together this lookbook and the different. And then I've been watching a couple of video, a couple of channels that teach you how to do different transitions and cool effects in, in Final Cut Pro and things. So, you know, I've got like ideas for that. 
I think I told you guys about this as well. I found some really cool music that was is going to make the most awesome 80s montage kind of um, video as well. So I want to do that. So, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got so many plans. <laughs> I need to uh, be working on the video tutorials for the bag that we're going to be sewing at the October retreat. Um, it is a bag that I have previously made and that is already a sew along for on my channel, but I have some updates for, for it and which I really want to do. Um, and it's, it's a gorgeous bag and I'm going to be putting together the Facebook group for the October retreat and announcing the bag that we're going to be making in that very soon. So that's coming. Um, so yeah, I'm, you know, the, the miserable weather could definitely have been getting me down, but it's making me think about all the things that I want to be making now that it's getting a bit, a bit cooler, but you know, like tomorrow it could be back to being 31 degrees again, because we live in England and you never know, you never know what you're going to get. You never know. Right, where did I get to with the chat? Uh, Caroline says, I hit the gin at 4 a.m. today, never too early. Anna says, I like French seams. They just add that little extra touch. Admittedly, they do not. I do not do them every time I make a garment. Uh, yeah, I don't French seam anything that's going to be fully lined that you're never going to see the insides of the bodice. Those just get sewn together. I don't even overlock or pink or do anything with those because as far as I'm concerned, the lining's going to protect the inside of those. But there's, if there's ever a garment where you're going to see the insides of it, like there isn't a lining, you're just going to, like this one, um, French seams for me. So, yeah, it's just personal preference. And again, the beauty of making your own clothes means that you can make them in whichever way you want. Uh, where did we get to? Jennifer says, what is the make today? I'm just finishing off the sweetheart dress. I needed to put the sleeves in and tack down the facing, which is what I'm currently doing. And then I am going to hand hem the facing. And then I can, I think I'm just going to trim bulk off of these corners. I didn't do that. I remember I didn't do that. Yeah, just need to just need to trim that a little bit because that is quite bulky much better and then I can tack down those little bits as well get rid of that um Rachel Lynn says, chilly in August. I'm glad I don't live there. I know. I know. I know I, know I said this earlier as well, but yeah, we, we in the UK are not set up for heat. We're not really set up for anything but mild weather. If it snows, we get upset. If it gets too hot, we get upset. We're just, we can't, we complain about the weather constantly, don't we? I'm really not complaining about the heat. I would I wouldn't have minded more hot days for sure. Like getting dressed this morning, it was like, what am I gonna wear? I want to cover my legs up. Okay, just tack down this bit here. Where did I get to? Jennifer says, I love chilly weather. 
You do live somewhere, though, that you have more hot than you have anything else, though, don't you, Jennifer? I can imagine it would be nice to have, every now and again have something, you know, a little bit of variation. Uh, Lottie says, a major part of wanting to move north for us, too hot down here. Angelique is here. Hello to all. Can I have a gin and tonic? <laughs> Definitely. Go for it. And Natalie says, linings aren't as hard as I thought they were going to be. And I really love the finish. Oh, yay, Natalie. What um, What are you making? What dress are you making? Or top are you making? Or what thing are you making that you, you've just lined? Just do this last little bit. I really like lining um, projects. I'm actually thinking about lining the 6696 just so that I can finish the armholes with lining rather than bias binding but I don't know if that's excessive <laughs> you might be but I'm thinking about it right let's slip stitch this into place Where did I get to with the chat? Nimoy says, we're similarly ill-prepared for heat over here and do add the insult to, and to add insult to injury, the library does have air conditioning and we all agree that it hasn't been working right in the last few days. Lasai, oh no. Getting chilly now. Uh, Jennifer says, Miss Penelope Wigglebottom of the Hampton Wigglebottoms is being very naughty. She is trying to chew on the blind cord. She is going to sp get spayed with wa sprayed with water. <laughs> yeah, Chiana, Chiana never that never stopped her doing the thing that she was she was doing. She just looked at me like I murdered her firstborn. Although I don't, she probably had done that herself. To be fair, um, yes. Anessa says, "Good morning, Sean. Good morning, everyone. Hello, Anessa." Star says, I hate cold weather, but I'm being a sock compared to you, UK people. <laughs> a sook compared to you, to, to um, you UK people. Uh, Anessa says, good evening, Sal. Chris says, when I saw rayon fabric, it pull when I sew rayon fabric, it pulls at the seams and frays. Do you think French seams would help that? Trying to think, the rayons that I've had that have done that, it's because I am squeezing myself into something that's too tight for me and it's putting tension on the seams that shouldn't have been there. The rayon dresses that I have French seamed are like the Eve dress and I've had one of those pull slightly, but that was because I tried to, I was sitting on the floor and I tried to scoot back and I was still sat on the dress and so I put pressure on. It's always been, the fr they've always frayed when there's pressure on them. It, it, it might help because it's reinforcement. I don't know. Has anyone else got any um, uh, wisdom to offer on this subject? Natalie says, I can sleep better in wet weather. Must be the ecosystem in my nasal passages that prefer it. I'm making the sew over it Zoe dress uh, in a ditzy 30s print. I'll post on the peeps group later for you all. Oh, yes, please. And then Sal, Sal said hello to Anessa. Uh, yeah, does anyone have any words of wisdom for um, whether French seams will help rayon not to fray at the seams? I can't say that, like I said, the only times that I've noticed it is when I've been squeezing myself into dresses that I shouldn't have been squeezing myself into and the, the seams have, have, have um, suffered because of that. And I, I, I'm not saying that that's the problem that you're having, Um it's just that that's been my experience of of it fraying. Um, Rachel Lynn says, if it frays with too much tension, then maybe check the tension on your machine. Poss, yeah. I 
I'm kind of thinking I might do the same hem finish on the hem of the skirt that I'm going to do on the sleeves and hand, hand finish the hem there rather than put bias binding on, although I like the idea of bias binding because it will give it a bit more weight. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll she'll have to see. But yeah, because bias I always find that bias binding does give a little bit more weight to uh, to a hem, which I sometimes want in my skirt hems, but not on the sleeve. I didn't want more weight on the sleeve hem, I wanted them to sit or be as fluttery as possible, which is another reason that I'm not doing machine stitching on them. Um, ah, yeah. Chris says, seems to happen with centre back seams. I pull my dresses when I sit down, so perhaps I shouldn't. Yeah, I think um, that was, that was the, that's the few times that I've noticed it with mine was when I'd pulled on my dress I mean, rayon is a is a fine fabric, isn't it? So yeah, um, she's uh, rayon. Uh, Chris says I have given up on rayon for now. Uh, how else could you reinforce those seams? Hmm. We'll have to look that one up. Anessa says my cheap rayon did this in my son's shorts. The something seems held up better the french seems held up better than the normal ones though okay eileen's here she says sometimes if you sew too close to the seam edge some fabrics fray back quite quickly i've noticed this once or twice yeah i've had that happen to me as well ruthanne says my experience is that french seams help a bit but wearing ease matters more Sorry, I've gone quiet again. I did have lunch before I came down so that I wouldn't have to eat with you guys, but this is around about the time that I usually would have something to eat and now I'm kind of feeling hungry. I mean, I had a giant portion of um, the um, spicy pork noodles, so I really don't need any food. I'm not, I'm not remotely hungry. I think it's just force of habit. Mum was, um, mum thought she'd finished quilting her dragon quilt and we went to lay it down in the kitchen and there were two corners missing. It was like, oh no. She'd made them, but then just put them away safely on the side and hadn't put them, hadn't put the batting and the backing onto them. So um, has just finished doing that and is now in the process of, of quilting them. So she's almost finished quilting it and then she's just got to put it together, put a border on and bind it. So it's getting close to being done. Although she wants to keep it. I think my uncle would be upset if she did. It's a very amazing quilt. Let's see. Um, Anessa says, thanks, Sean. I can't type lol. I got what you meant, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Chris says, thanks, guys. And Caroline says, rayon seam binding might help. Of course, yeah. Although I hate working with that stuff. Laura May from Laura May Designs, uses rayon seam binding on everything and it's beautiful. But I just found it so fiddly to work with. And I've got two rolls of it because you guys, um, two people sent me some, hug snug. And I will try it again. But it just got so frustrating trying to work with it. It was like, having, having got so used to bias binding. I think that was my issue.
Okay. Eileen says, um, hello, Sean and peeps. I've been listening for a bit, but not feeling very talkative today, but thought I should say hello. It's nice to have you all in the background. Welcome, Eileen. It's nice to see you, my lovely. I'm bummed I'm not going to get to see you in October. I do, I, I'm not, I, I do understand why. And I have got the dates for April and May. So I will be sending those out very soon, um, which is exciting. Um, but yeah, I'm sad I don't get to see you in October. Um, Natalie says, hello, Eileen. I like to lurk sometimes too. Lurk as you know. Nothing wrong with a bit of lurking. Let's just turn that around a bit. I really ought to get into a better position for hand hemming online. Let's try getting a bit closer and having my work on the table rather than on my lap. Let's see if that works better. Cecilia says, I can relate to wanting to keep the quilts. Spent a year crocheting my sister a heavy blanket and wanted to keep it by the end. I've yet to make another one. Our oh, Jane um, finished an amazing crocheted medallion blanket that is just stunning. And it was like, oh, that's the kind of thing that I can't ask my niece to do because it would take forever. And, you know, I'd have to pay her a ridiculous amount of money because like not I mean it, it wouldn't be a ridiculous it would be a fair amount of money but it would it would cost an awful lot to do because it was a giant thing and it was just beautiful and I was like okay I need to learn to crochet <laughs> but then I tried learning to knit and I just didn't find it therapeutic or 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 something that I took to very well I've got a scarf in one of my drawers that I started two two winters ago that I really ought to finish but I've got that much done. <laughs> this is slightly better. I've been noticing that I've been getting back back issues. Um because I, I curl in on myself and especially when I'm sitting on my, on my sofa and editing and sewing. So I need to, I need to be more mindful about my posture while I'm sitting because it will um, hurt less. <laughs> Angeliki says, long sleeves and a jacket. We, uh, here we are very, very warm weather. Oh yeah, ours disappeared, Angeliki. It's um, the joys of British summertime, 30, Six degrees one day, 22 the next. Fun times. Eileen says, I'm sad about October too, but looking forward to May. Hello, Natalie. <laughs> yeah. May's going to be fun, I promise. I mean, October's going to be fun, obviously, but May's going to be fun too. Jojo says, I'm a bit lurky today too, Eileen. Just, I want to get this jumpsuit finished. It's taking forever and I really want to wear it. <laughs> I'm cutting out stuff. Oh, um, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, which jumpsuit are you making, Jojo? Rachel says, I can crochet, but not knit two needles. <laughs> it was so confusing. <laughs> Um, Jennifer says, I'm cutting out stuff, so I understand on the lurking. Yeah. There's 96 of you in here. Uh, Lottie says, I can knit and can't crochet. My mum could crochet and never got the hang of knitting, so maybe crochet will be for you. I sh that's why I think I want to give it a try. Uh, Nemoy says, knitting does nothing for me, but I fell into crochet in a heartbeat. Lots of good tutorials on YouTube if you want to try. You guys are making me think I ought to give it a go. I uh, read that one, sorry. Um, oh, uh, Jojo says it's another Cressida by Sew Me Something. Ooh, nice. And Nimue says, and I'm bummed about October too. We're so looking forward to all of your, um, all of you new, new try next year. Yeah, exactly, Nimue. Exactly. I was looking forward to meeting you too. And then Kirby and Arlene were going to be coming from um, Canada. And yeah. 
And then Judith was coming with her husband, but couldn't. So, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things, isn't it? One of those things. Next year is going to be awesome. This year is going to be awesome too, but next year is going to be awesome. Judy says, still here, got the false poppers on the pocket of my Kelly. Nice. I lined my Kelly um, pocket um, pockets because I read that the back of the press stud can irritate the hand. Um, if it's too late for you to line your pocket, um, maybe have a look at just putting something on the back of the press stud, maybe like a little piece of tape or something, just so that it doesn't rub on your hand when you put your hands in your pockets. Um, Jennifer says, make sure you like the live stream. Thank you for reminding me, Jennifer. Yes, please, if you wouldn't mind liking the live stream, that'd be awesome. And if possible, come back a little later and just leave a little, a little comment on it once it's finished. That is all very helpful. Thank you very much. Um, a couple of you guys have been pointing out that the adverts on the live streams, when they go up to be rewatched as reruns, they for some reason the uh, YouTube software is putting all of the ads in the first hour, and for a six-hour live stream, that's something like thirty ads in the first hour. So I have been going out in and taking some of them out, and. Um, taking some of them out and um, spacing them out a little bit better, but it does take a little while for them to generate. So bear with me. And I've had a few comments recently about people saying that there's ads on my channel and there was like an ad one minute into a video. Um, that is part of my income and my livelihood. So yes, there will be ads on my channel and I'm sorry if that annoys you, but there is always YouTube premium, which still pays me and you don't have to see ads as a lot of you have used. So yeah, um, ad, ads are a integral part of the channel, I'm afraid, so they're not going anywhere. They're usually skippable ads though. And if they're not skippable, that's not because I've made them not skippable. <laughs> Although some one one ad recently was for um, uh, a um, meditation and sleep app, and it was a 20, 28 minute ad. And my mom was like, "I'm not watching that." So <laughs> like, no, it's fine. It was Stephen Fry reading a story, so you know it was twenty eight minutes of Stephen Fry being awesome. But still, that's a that's a long advert. Um, Cecilia says, I like both knit and crochet, but the only thing they have in common is yarn. <laughs> yeah, maybe I ought to give crochet a try. Kim says, I love the knitting and crocheting, currently knitting myself a cardigan. Very nice. Anessa says, Claire, beautiful things, even sells beginner crochet packs. She does indeed. She does indeed. Judy says, um, oh, we'll do for the back of the uh, popper for her Kelly Anorak thingy. Uh, Angelique says, in the city where I live, we have the same humidity in winter and somehow more than you, but you have more cold. Yeah. I would like to live somewhere which is like a little bit warmer or a little bit less fluctuation in the weather, like actual seasons in month spans rather than days spans, which would be nice. Um, goblin fruit is here, also lurking. I've been doing this lurking business for weeks. The joys of working freelance always seem to be working on Sunday nights. I'm glad you can join us. And Karen is here. Good morning, peeps. What are you up to, Sean? I am currently 
finishing the hems on the sleeves of the sweetheart dress. Needed to get those done today, so I'm just hand finishing those. This fabric is a bugger. Like, it's even, it's kind of like running from the, it's, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Maybe that's why it didn't go into production because it just, like the minute it you put a needle in it, it's it runs and it runs white. It's fine though, it's fine. Um, Goblin Fruit says, but it's lovely listening to you guys while I'm working, currently doing tech packs for a ballet skirt production run, so must not fluff it up, <laughs> Simone. Thank you for putting in your name, Simone. I'd, 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 I'd forgotten, and I didn't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> Rachel Lynn says, yeah, I'll watch the 30 second ads, but when they're over a minute, I do skip, yeah. I like the um, ads for movies. I like, the, like the, the mini movie trailers. Those ones I watch the whole thing, for sure. Um, Lottie says, is there a huge difference in revenue if the ad is skipped? My son sometimes skips them before I get a chance to stop him. I genuinely don't know. I think there's a specific amount of um, ad that needs to be watched for there to be any revenue but I don't know the inner workings of that and in all honesty one of the first rules of AdSense is that you don't really talk about AdSense that you need to not be seen to be manipulating AdSense in any way shape or form especially by asking people to watch the adverts so I'm not asking you to watch the adverts unless they are interesting to you um, the way my manager put it is that it's my job to make content to give to YouTube for YouTube to then put the adverts on it and it's the advertiser's job to make the advert interesting for you to watch and want to click on it and watch it so that's you know I'm not saying that you should watch all of the ads uh, or watch an ad the whole way through at all like unless it's interesting to you and something that you're genuine genuinely want to see um I'm not trying to um, influence that in any way shape or form because as I say that's completely frowned upon and, and not not good um, but I'm, I am saying that the ads are an integral part of my channel so they will always be there unless you have YouTube premium um, why did I get to Caroline says goblin fruit to Simone what type of ballet skirts Judy says back to the Kelly's sewing the pockets on is a faff yes it is but they're worth it when you get there Chris says do you get less money if we skip an ad um again I don't know and um I've, I've, I've said everything I'm going to say about it because I don't want to get into trouble and have my AdSense account completely banned because it is half my income. <laughs> Nimoy says, I started a wintry cross-stitch project last week because all my crochet projects are a lap full of yarn stage and I wanted something to do outside despite the heat. Very sensible. Alison says, I'm looking forward to when you are going to do the sew along for the Vogue jacket that you intend to make for Wilson and the pattern is no longer available. Oh no. Yeah, I need to pull my finger out and start getting that done because um, it's his birthday at the beginning of October. <laughs> Cecilia says, I wouldn't mind ads near so much if I could mute them. Some of them um, really interrupt the flow. Yeah. Yeah, again, I don't manually place my adverts and perhaps I should. Um, because you can place them wherever you want in a video. You have to go in and do it. And that might be something that I have a look at doing because it's it can be like a tv show where you place it at a strategic point rather than just wherever youtube decides to plonk them alison says i highly recommend youtube premium peeps 
Uh, Caroline says to Nimue, I've just finished the stitching on the shore on the Stitch Rovia's Lord of the Rings design. Ooh, cool. Goblin, uh, Simone says, four different designs, rehearsal and practice skirts, very simple designs. Caroline says, going to start another slightly different colorway for a family of Tolkien nuts. It's a good precedent, a good present. Ah, cool. And um, Caroline says to Simone, I've always loved my Silphid practice skirt. And Nimoy says to Caroline, says that sounds awesome. And Caroline says, I'll put a picture in the Beats group later. Yes, please. Yes, please. I think I can see this fabric was not put into mass production because I can imagine that sewing this on industrial machines the, the the like the little runs that i'm talking about would just it would be in, it would just be for make for like everything would be faulty i mean i'm hand sewing this and it's getting little runs in it every now and again and again you know nothing terrible i'm gonna wear this with pride because it's a very pretty dress Lottie says, I 100% support any channel having ads or sponsorships. It's a job after all. Yeah. I haven't done any sponsorships for a long time because all the ones that I've been offered recently have not been things that I would um, be interested in, in showing you guys. Like, you know, that's the, the, the few sponsorships that I've done or featured videos that I've done have always been for something that I love and would genuinely have spent money on it anyway um when we move i am going to talk to my manager about some sponsorships with uh slightly different companies than would maybe usually feature on the channel because you know there's going to be a lot of decorating um going on so that to me makes sense. And again, it's it's stuff that I love. So yeah, I do I, I do try and be careful with my sponsorships that I do take on. And as you've seen, there aren't very many of them. Um, because I don't want it to be like I mean, I got offered it quite a few from different tea companies and things like that. And um, up until recently, I haven't drunk tea very often at all. So it just, it, no, it wouldn't have quite worked. Right. One down, one to go. And then, shall I try it on and show you what it looks like? I haven't tried it on with the sleeves on yet, so I have no idea if I'm going to like them. I have a feeling that I might need to tweak them a little bit for the next one that I do. Um, but yeah, would you like to see what it looks like? Or not? Are you not remotely interested? Or do you want to wait for the um, notebook? <laughs> Why are words so hard today? Uh, where did I get to? Let's see. Sal says, love Lord of the Rings. I've got a photo with Elijah Wood, Frodo and Sean Astin, Samwise. Nice. Lottie says, we need Spoonflower to sponsor you again. Um, actually, that's one that I would like to approach because I would, I think I talked about it um, in the hangout when I was organising my fabric, but I would really like one of their fabrics 
to line my trench coat in. And that's incredibly extra because it's it would be about a hundred pounds worth of fabric. But yeah, if I could guess if I could get Spoonflower to sponsor me again, that would be awesome. It probably result in another video of me just gushing about <gasps> Um, Simone says to Caroline, we are doing longer full, li full, longer line full circle skirts in that style. It's very pretty, but this label doesn't launch for a few months yet. So can't talk too much about it. Ooh, ooh. We're getting some insider knowledge. Love it. Nimue says, Sean, I'd say you're totally doing your part of the job for ads, advertisers, and YouTube algorithm, not so much. <laughs> yeah, I definitely provide um, enough content. <laughs> Cecilia says, I think it's shady that they cut how much ads pay during COVID. People have been watching more and adverts have been reaching more people, so it's only right that the creators have paid their part. Yeah, that was um, that that wasn't good, <laughs> but but um, a lot of the things that were due to be, I mean, and this is just me speculating. This is no insider knowledge. I don't have any of that kind of knowledge whatsoever. But a lot of the ads that we're going to be playing were all for kind of like going out and doing things. Um, you know, that would have been the sort of adverts that had been created and then suddenly the entire world changed. Um, so yeah, you'd have thought that there would be, because more people are staying at home and watching more TV, that there would be, or more YouTube, there would be more um, advertising revenue rather than less. But do you feel yeah. anything? I'm good. I had lunch before I came down. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh, okay. I try I would try to think ahead. Good, well done. Although if there's tea being made, I will have one, but not, not at the moment. No, there will be. Yes, yes. Mum had a haircut yesterday. Uh, it's a bit frizzy now. It still looks very nice. Thank you. It's her first time out in the world for five months. Yeah. <laughs> but literally just to the hairdresser and out and, and, and home. Yeah. <laughs> With my mask on. Yes. <laughs> ah, how's it going? Good. 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 Everybody well? I think so. Um, Alison says it would be great to get sponsorship from Benina. <laughs> yeah, it would. That would oh, be amazing. Yes, please. And Amanda Murphy has. <laughs> She's their ambassador now. I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd happily be a Benina ambassador, but they tend to give you a machine when you're doing that. I can't imagine that they give me an 880. <laughs> I don't think, and you know, anything oh, less than that would be a step down. I don't know. I don't know. That's probably what they want to sell. Well, and what they want to sell is the sort of like the slightly more mid tier ones, I would oh, think, because I would imagine that it's it's quite not so many people no, would I'm be spending so. this much money on a machine when there's mid tier ones that are nearly as good. I think that's why the ambassadorship programs tend to give out like the four series or the five series oh the four series i wouldn't want them there. no exactly they're great mm. they're great but for me it would just be like mm. what's the point i won't use it i've got this <laughs> no. yeah yes um rachel lynn says yes we want to see chris says yes please and anessa says so that'll be a i'll try the dress on then <laughs> what's that no I, they, I was saying shall i try the dress on when i'm finished with it and they were saying yes course. Um, Cecilia says you're asking us if we have patience. <laughs> Why? Uh, I can't remember what I'd asked to be honest. <laughs> um, Rachel Lynn says so I'm sitting here and watching and my dog Dio. DOG? Jump. 
how to say that, uh, jumped on my bed and laid his head on my phone. And apparently he wanted me to pet him instead of watching you. <laughs> yes. Um, M Huntley says, I know that Rachel Lynn creator is watching the live stream and I just wanted to publicly tell her that I think she's really beautiful. And Rachel Lynn says, that's my husband, everyone. Aww. Oh, that's a nice husband. Which Rachel's that? Rachel Lynn. Natalie says, I can imagine a collab with you and Spoonflower, Leafy Rayon perhaps. They don't have a rayon background or a rayon base fabric. Um, the last time I did a collab with Spoonflower, I got the cotton sateen, which I love. I do love, but it's, it's you know, I wouldn't make a floaty dress out of it because it's not floaty. And I have also had... I mean, I've got lots of their cotton silk, which unfortunately they don't do the, ba the base anymore. And I've got, I've used their poly satin for lining of coats multiple times. And I love that. And that's what I would want um, if I could get a sponsorship with them. That is what I would like to work with is the poly satin for a lining for a coat. But I need to get my manager to approach them and see if they'll work with me again. <laughs> Sure, good. Hopefully. We'll see. Is it all right me doing bubbles? Yeah, go for it. Not too noisy. No, it'll be fine. Caroline says to Sal, my son worked on Terry Pratchett miniseries, The Colour of Magic, with Sean Austin Ooh. and Jeremy Irons. He has drunk staggering around Ank Morpork with a ponytail. Oh. Nice. I don't know if I ever watched that, you know. I need to check that right? out. The Colour of Magic? I don't think I've watched it. I know they did The Hogfather, which I've watched most of it, but I need to watch that again properly as well. I don't really watch TV. I watch Netflix. Um, Terry I Pratchett's Terry Burden Pratchett. of Christmas. Yeah, I watched The Postman. That's good. And obviously Good Omens. Yes. Um, Sal says good morning to you, Mum. Good morning. Jennifer says I've had my hair done last week, so I feel you. I love it because the grey hair had to go. Nimoy says hi to Mum. Sal says to Caroline that's awesome. So jealous. Lottie says you could always have one for at Wilson's flat. Oh God, there isn't room for Wilson at, at Wilson's flat. He wants to get another guitar. Have one what? Sewing machine. Oh, right. Well, that's the point. No, there's no room. I'm out, okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Lynn says, spell dog. Dog. Oh. D-O-G. Oh, D-O-G. Okay. What? Somebody's just said that their dog's called D-O-G. Like that phonetically, rather than it's, yeah. yeah. Dad's just on his way out. Um, Jojo says, Mike, long-suffering husband, are you listening gold star for that hubby? <laughs> Cecilia says to Rachel Lynn, that's quite a witty name, I like it, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty convinced that my next cat is going to be called the Cat Bastet. The cat what? <laughs> the Cat Bastet. The, the Egyptology series. Oh, they, yeah. Yes. They've, um, a brindle cat has adopted them. And um, it's, the, it's the Cat Bastet. But it's always the Cat Bastet. Never just Bastet. <laughs> And actually, all the pronunciations that they have for mm -hmm. things is different because I thought it was Bast. Mm. How did you know what, what it should be? I, d have I, I don't. They know that I'm listening to the audiobooks. Oh, so right. that's how they're saying it. Yeah. Like Imhotep is very different. And um, rather than Ramesses, which is how I thought Ramesses was said, it's Ramses. Oh, no, it's Ramesses. Well, not according to the narrator of this book. Ah, I like that. 
Although I love the fact that they're constantly going around shouting for Ramses in, in Egypt and there's all these people looking at them like, why are you trying to summon an ancient pharaoh? And it's like, no, we're looking for a child, <laughs> an annoying child. <laughs> Uh, Kim says, loved good omens. It, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Thought they did that really well. It's one of my favorite books of theirs as well. Alison says, hello to you, mum. Sal says, there is a story I love called A Boy and His Dog by Harlan Ellison, and the dog is named Dog. Yeah, the dog in um, Good Omens is called Dog as well. Rachel then says, my husband wants a cat just so he can. <laughs> my husband wants a cat just so he can call it Cat Bastard. <laughs> Why? Does he not like cats? I don't know how true this is, but a friend of mine told me that her neighbour had called their cat Sod It and Damn It. Yeah. Just so that they can go out at night called sod it, damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You always have to remember naming an animal. You yeah, you're have gonna to have to shout it. at it. Also children. Mm -hmm. Anna is here. Hello, everyone. It's still hot here in Holland. It's 30 degrees. Oof. Ouchie. Sorry, yeah. Hanny, Hanny in, is in Holland. Oh, no. Rachel Lynn says, because he thinks it's funny. <laughs> okay. Um, Jennifer says, I can't name an animal until I see it, but then the name comes to me, and you know how I name animals. Yeah, you have some amazing names for your cats, Jennifer. Anessa says, when my son was little, he had a budgie named Awesome, Awesome Bluebird. It mm. was purple. <laughs> awesome Bluebird. And it was purple? It was purple. Okay. Nice. My first cat was called Purdy after the Avengers, because mum, mum and dad had another cat called Gambit. Um, but I don't think my brother and I kind of registered that, because I don't think at the time we knew what the, those Avengers, Avengers were. So when we got another another cat, we called it per, um, Perdita. And then it turned out it was a girl, a boy, so it was Perkins. Jojo says, imagine standing at your door at night calling for Dave Lister and the late Baldrick. <laughs> <laughs> yep, nice. Anna says, I was going to say, imagine calling out loud the cats with cheeky names. Somebody would walk past and might think they're getting called to. <laughs> yep. Mm, I'm getting all sorts of trouble. Caroline says, I think Ramses is my favourite character. I just love the way, again, I don't know if you've listened to the audiobooks, Caroline, but the, the way that the narrator voices the characters is just priceless. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, but, yeah, he is a precocious child. And it, like, I just, yeah. Cecilia says, we have kittens named Spaz and Una. And when my husband goes out and just yells, Spaz, 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 I can only imagine what the neighbours think. <laughs> yep. Caroline says, I had a friend whose poor cat was called 
Crippen. Oh gosh. Um, and yep, we all have the we have all the available audiobooks. And wait till you see how he grows up. You'll love it. Oh, I'm so excited. When do I get to meet? And don't tell me who Anubis is. But when do I get to meet Anubis? How many books in have I got to wait? Faye's here. Hello. Hi, Faye. How are you? Hello, Faye. Laurie is here. Hi all. I tend to name my pets mythological names. Echo, Medea, Titan and Orion. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think I've told you I very nearly called um, Chiana Ariadne after the Greek um, mythology character. That She was the one who helped Theseus in the, um, in the maze with the Minotaur. She was the one that had the ball of, um, ball of yarn that would get you out of the maze. But my... Um, my flatmate couldn't pronounce it so it went with i went with chiana instead but i do i love the idea of um greek mythology names the um french um french poetry patterns are named after um Greek mythology aren't they like the Orion shirt the Pleiades um dresses the Pleiades are the Hesperides Hesperides which are the goddesses of the dawn and dusk there's seven of them and they're also the um, representation of Taurus Um, Anessa says this is also the kid that named our cat cat dog or CD for short <laughs> nice. isn't that from like Dexter's laboratory or um, Arnold or something isn't that from a cartoon cat dog or isn't it a cat is there the cat dog cartoon I know there's there was a character named that Crafting Bev is here. Hello. Hello. Um, Faye says, hello. I'm good, thanks. Hello, Jane. Hello. <laughs> this could go on forever if you Thank keep you. saying hello to each other. <laughs> Anna says, in one of the Carry On films, there was a cat called Cooking Fat, as that is how it sounded. <laughs> Loved, that Loved that pun. Um, Aunt Bee's creation says, lol, my cats were Howie, Tippy, and Callie, very cat names. And Janiki says, how do you say the end of the dress? How do you say the end of the dress twist? Why don't you sew it on the machine? There are specific threads for specific fabrics if you if you give to give you elastic. Um I I I'm just I just want uh, are we talking about this one? I just want I don't want any machine stitching visible on the outside of my dress, which is why I'm doing this one by hand. I mean I could do a blind hem on the machine, I suppose, but I find I like slip stitching hems, so that's why I'm doing this one. Um, Judy says my cat's called Freud. It started as a sig as a Sigmund, but it was later rechristened Freud. He's a yeah. Norwegian forest cat. Um, was I was told that Norwegian forest cats Norwegians named their cats with names starting with S. Oh, okay. Crafting Bev says I have a dwarf parakeet whose name was a little bit was a little bit Aloysius troublemaker. <laughs> um, Caroline says Anubis is in the book seven, the snake, the crocodile and the dog. Okay, awesome. Laurie says my aunt had a dog named Ariadne. It's a beautiful name, I like it. Judy says, um, so I had Silvest, Sloveg, Severin, Sigmund, Siegfried, Siri and Sisal. Wow, that's a lot of Norwegian forest cats. I only have Sigmund Freud now. Oh, gosh, that's going from that many to just Sigmund. And Caroline says there was a really good book, Amelia Peabody's um, Egypt, worth getting a copy if you can. Okay, I'll have a look. Thank you. Faye says Gigi's full name is Princess Georgina Sassikins. Nice. Gigi for sure. I love that video you put up the other day, just packing things around. 
was like, the look on her face, she was like, I can get this off the table. I shall. Nimoy says, Jane, could you be persuaded to do a tutorial on how you quilt your quilts and sections and put pieces together? Not sure how I'll manage my big quilt. Is she coming to the... No. Maybe the next one? Possibly. I could show her. Um. Yeah, can you wait till May? <laughs> uh. What, how you put the... How you put it together once you've quilted it as you go. Oh, right. Oh, it's up to you, Sean. With your filming skills. Yes. I don't want to make mum wait for me. So, m maybe. A good place to look is the Quilt Show. Yeah, the Quilt Show um, channel on YouTube is a good one. Anessa says, there's a cat dog cartoon, but he hadn't seen it yet, lol. I knew I'd, not heard, knew I'd heard that name before. Um, Sal says, I love the title of Satan's Son in Good Omen. Oh yeah, just, yes, I like that one too. My first cat was called Ribby Mittens. Was it? Yeah, oh, it was Precious Puss. That was her oh, nickname. Okay. But she was actually Ribby Mittens, and that was from the um, uh, Beatrix Potter's books. Oh. Yeah. Sal says, I love the title. Oh, I've read that one, sorry. Um, Caroline says to Anna, that was Carry On Loving, I think. Um, Lorianne says, my cousin was singing Ariadne off, off Naxus. Oh, cool. I didn't know there was a song. Sal says, the anniversary, destroyer of kings, angel of the bottomless pit, great beast that is called um, dragon, prince of this world, father of lies, spawn of Satan and lord of darkness. Yes. Who's that? The kid and uh, Satan's son in Good um, Omens. That's his full title. And then he called his hellhound dog. That's I made book made book club read it for the one time I that I got to recommend two books. I made them read that one and Ready Player One. Some of them liked it. Yeah. Some of them did not. Making them read the Ian McQuay, McQu Ian McCain one. Um, I'm human or whatever it is. Jojo says Cat Dog was a cartoon on its own. Angeliki says, okay, I understand. Oh, right, okay, yeah, sorry. I was like, what, 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 what? <laughs> Ruth Ann says, we had a guinea pig named Notorious Pig. My kids didn't understand the reference, so he was always called the pig. My guinea pigs were called Pig and Squeak, weren't they? Mm. Um, Faye says she loves knocking things on the floor. Um, Anna says to Caroline, sure was. It was the scene with Terry Scott and Imogen Hassel. I haven't seen Carry On films in such a long time. So like I said, I don't really, I don't watch TV. I only watch what's on Netflix and Amazon. So... It's not like they pop up and I'm like, ooh, let's put one of those on. Um, Faye says, I'm definitely coming in May. Awesome. Brilliant. I have transferred you over to May. I'm going to be releasing the dates very soon because they are booked in with Lyle Cream at the moment. Nimoy says, thanks, I'll have a look at that. Jennifer says, my cat names are as follows. Sassy LaRue, Supermodel Diva, Kitty Cat, Lola Rocket, Lucifer Lionheart, and Penelope Wigglebottom of the Hampton Wigglebottoms. You do name your cats well. Judy says, Sigmund is 15, looking old, and is only four teeth, but he controls the two canines very, very well. <laughs> awesome. Aunt Beer's Creation says, I got my first cat when I was one year old and named him Catty Cat and was 
that was his name forever. He was a huge all white cat with blue eyes and was deaf. I think um, all white cats that have blue eyes are deaf, aren't they? Are they? Yeah. Um, if you see blue ca uh, white cats with a blue eye and an orange eye, they tend to have hearing in the same side as the orange eye. Oh. But if they have blue eyes, they tend to be deaf. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a it's a genetic, a genetic trait. trait. Yeah. yeah. I was saying that yesterday Chiana and I sat on the sofa for the entire day and she sat on my lap all day, regardless of how many times I pushed her off to get up. She came back and she did the same this morning. I was trying to work. <laughs> she wasn't having any of it. <laughs> um, She's reclaiming you afterwards. Yes. Faye says, my friend had a called, uh, my friend had a dog called D4, D for dog. <laughs> Faye says, my first cat was called Chairman Meow. <laughs> oh dear. After the, was it, was it the Korean dictator or which dictator Chairman Meow? Where did he dictate? I can't remember. China. China, there you go. So Lily Bells, afternoon all. Hello, lovely, how are you? Alison says, is the Carry On films you're talking about have Sid James and Barbara Windsor? Yes, exactly those, Alison. I think they're a bit dated now. I would they imagine they are terribly, yeah. terribly not PC or, no, or sure. I think they're probably not stuff that you'd watch and just cringe at yeah. now. But Kenneth Williams, he was wonderful, but yes. he was of a time. Jen gone too far. <laughs> um, Jennifer says Penny has decided that I need to stop cutting fabric and pet her because she is in charge. Yes, but she's right. She is. Uh, Craft and Bev says my cat's names are Penelope Pitstop and Baby Girl. I used to have a cat named Trouble, but she passed away since. Oh. I like the names that you picked, though. It's quite serious, it's squeaking. That's it. Yeah, we shut the door. Alison says white cats can be deaf. Angelique says, I'm trying to keep on the dialogue and have confused everybody by changing subjects. How do you do it? Not very well, Angelique. If you not notice every now and again, I'll read a comment out and I'll be like, what was that in reference to? Where was she? In her bed in the sitting room. Disturbing the poor puppy. Jojo says, I had a rabbit when I was four in the early 80s and I gave him a name I'm still proud of now. Are you ready? Starksy in Hutch. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Starsky in a Hutch. That's great. Anna says to Alison, yep. Sal says, just completed another art piece. Very nice. Alison says to Anna, I love those films. Did you know Sid James and Barbara Windsor were having an affair for many years? I did not. Um, Caroline says, they're on Britbox, but still good for a giggle. Ch Face is China. Chairman Meow, fuck China. Meow, not Meow. <laughs> and... Uh, Jennifer says going to start some laundry be right back Faye says lovely to join in the chat for a little bit I'm off round to help my friend pack up her house as she is putting her house on the market and needs my tidying skills good luck with that Faye thank you for joining us Anna says to Alison I sure did the sh shenanigans they got up to should create a book of tongue in cheek oh gosh can you imagine I'm not sure that we should be reading it Okay, nearly done.
nearly done. Right, I'll um, go off camera to put this on because um, I don't want to get demonetized. That would be bad. Um, but uh, yes. So far, so good. Um, like I said, I think I am going to need to let the hem drop. We'll see in a second. I'm just out of visual shot, but I can still see and hear you, so don't misbehave. <laughs> I have to get you to zip me up if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I got into it the other day by wiggling around, but it was still like, why? Have you got... It's just a high zip up the back. Mm -hmm. so, just a little bit more awkward to get in and out of than usual. <laughs> looks dodgy, doesn't it? Just clothes flying into shot. <laughs> yeah. They're lovely, aren't they? I do like them. I made them myself. Oh, did you? I did, yes. They're not the... They are the sleeves from the original dress that I made flutter. I, I'll show you guys in a second. <laughs> show me first. Yes. <laughs> and I've dropped the waist. So it's actually on my waist this time because the last time the smallest point was up yeah, here. Yeah, so I think... I think it's much better I need to do that as well. I've actually added an inch and three quarters to the, to the waist two inches here and two inches at the hem of wow. that much length to this dress. It's pretty though. Yeah, it's lovely. So the hem definitely needs to be leveled. It's, it's dropped in a couple of places. Um, but I really like these sleeves on it. I think mm. that's got, gives it a really kind of forties look, doesn't it? Again, I think they're lovely. Yeah. And I might do that. They were just they were just the original sleeves. I trimmed them down to like I, I took eight inches off the bottom because the sleeve comes to here That's usually. Right. So I took eight inches off the bottom and then slashed and spread it out so that it's the, it's the same cap uh -huh. that fits in. That's clever. And then and that's just how you make a flutter sleeve. And I was worried that I hadn't done it correctly and it was going to be too high here and longer here, but it's they've worked really well and I really like this sleeve mm. with it and then I did put the bishop sleeves on the other one mm. which was a really nice look as well mm. and you could do that you wouldn't need to have it all the way down to the mm. but you could definitely do that as well if you wanted to and mm. then because this no they'd make me look wider but this is um this is a dress that you don't have to make enough in this fluttery because your your quilting cotton one mm. looks beautiful as well yeah they work so that's really nice yeah so yeah I've added an inch and three quarters to the length of the torso so that my waist the smallest part is on my waist I've added two inches of length in this area because I didn't want to widen the bottom anymore and when I came to look at it I'd already added two inches of length to the bottom of this skirt anyway but it now hits me kind of in the place that I like on me but as you can see the hem does need to be let to drop but my other one previously was kind of finishing there which I don't think is as flattering as that. But then again, everybody has like a, a, a personal preference, don't they? I'll get you to help me alter my pattern to that. So it's on the, you know, a bit yeah. like my way. Yeah. But um, you can see my comedy tan lines from where Wilson and I went to the beach the other day and I was wearing my 5209. And uh, <laughs> yes, I caught the sun. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I need to wear one of these out and catch the sun in this. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this. I'm really pleased with this. I was a bit worried about these sleeves, but I really like them on this dress. I think it gives it a really kind of 30s, 40s feel. Um, as I say, the waist is now... It's still not like super tight, but I don't want it to be super tight, especially without a waistband, because I think I, I could definitely wear a belt with this if I wanted to cinch it in a bit more at the waist, though. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased with this. I like these sleeves. They're so cool. So I'm going to catch up with the chat now, because you're all being nice, and I'm going to read that after having talked to you guys earlier about the about being, being nice in the comments. <laughs> uh, where did I get to? Where did I get to? Where did I get to? Uh, Alison says to Anna, Barbara Rinza bought out an autobiography, autobiography many years ago. It would be a very interesting read as I think she was involved with one of the Cray brothers. Sal says, I'm not going to say more, remove the mannequin, I'll never do that. <laughs> Anna, Anna says to Alison, I've not read it yet. She was involved, She was yes, she was involved with them. Caroline says to Alison, no, her husband, Ronnie Knight, was friends with them as was Diane Dawes' husband, Alan Lake. Jennifer says, one of the benefits to being double jointed everywhere is that I can zip myself up. I, I just about managed it by myself the other day, but it, you know, if I have if I have help, then I'm going to take it. So um, I've not quite got the right bra on for this one. So when I wear my other bra, it does the, the, the facing does sit a little bit better, but I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, let's see, where did we get to? Um, Angelique, he says, very beautiful. Jojo says gorgeous, so does Jennifer. Kathy says beautiful, very pretty from Nimue. Anessa says very, very pretty. Lossie says looks great. Learning Stitches says beautiful. Alison says the dress is beautiful, Sean. I think I'll have to buy that pattern. You are a bad influence. Um, tell her I sent you. <laughs> She's lovely. She is very lovely. Um, the lady that owns so la -di -da, but tell her I sent you. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I don't have any stock. Not anymore. No, I did sell those patterns when I when I had the shop, but I don't have have any st in stock. So yes, um, uh, sorry. Kim says beautiful. Aunt Bee's creation says beautiful. Polly says very nice. Dagmar says the dress is gorgeous on you, and I really love the flutter sleeves. Anna says your shan. Sean, your dress looks wonderful, very fluttery. Thank you. Um, Jojo says, I have a billion patterns, but I think I need this one too. Uh, Eileen says, the dress looks great. Love the sleeves also. Natalie Harrison says, wonderful, looks spiffing. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, thank you to everybody. Sorry, I'm not saying thank you individually. Um, Sal says, looks exceptional. Jennifer says, the color is great on you as well. Thank you. Um, Learning Stitcher says, I love the sleeves. Laurie says, that's beautiful. And Tariki says, this high of your dress it would be amazing this type of dress would be amazing with high heels yes and i have some i have some royal blue heels i can wear with this and i also have some bright pink heels i can wear with this i think are going to look really pretty with it um so lily bell says it's beautiful i love the sweetheart neckline me too i think i actually because they it comes with two necklines so it comes with the the straight across neckline or it comes with the sweetheart and i think i prefer the sweetheart i like both I do like my portrait mm. neckline. Mm. That's what I've, it's a square neckline. I've started calling it a portrait one, but it, you know, it's just mm. a square. But I think I prefer the sweetheart out of the both, out of both of them. Um, Claudia says the neckline looks fabulous. Thank you. Crafting Bev says the dress looks really great on you. Lottie says the only times I catch the sun is when I'm wearing the most random shaped tops. Best. Time um, I've had a weird cold shoulder type of thing with random cutouts and a strange halter neck. Yeah, I, it's usually like you can see, like I've got sort of like random farmer's tans kind of lines here and stuff as well. <laughs> um, Judy says, Judy gives me lots of hearts. Eileen Moore says, have you done any tutorials on hemming a full skirt after allowing it to drop? Yes, a couple. Um, where the... the uh, they're in sew alongs. I am probably going to do a standalone tutorial for that as well because there's a few different ways that I hem something after after it's dropped on the bias. So um, the five nine five one I have coming out. I have a the method where I measure everything. Sometimes I'll put it on the mannequin, and um, I have tried recently putting 
the paper pattern back on top of it, but I found that that didn't, well, I'm not sure if it's worked, but I don't think it's worked as well as measuring. I think measuring is my favorite one of all of doing it. There is a device that you can get in America, which is, goes along with the mannequin. And it's, it's a little bit like this, which is what, what you, um, there's, there's like a little device that attaches to this with, uh, that you put chalk in, and then you move this up and down to whichever level you want your hem to be. And then you puff chalk and move the dress around and the chalk makes a solid line on the dress, which you then trim off there. Um, there's also a device that I've only ever seen in America um, that's very similar to that, but it has like, it has a grip that you put the fabric in the middle of, and then it has a hole so you can put a pin through the, the hole so that it's, it's like, a, I can't remember what it's called, but it will allow you to, to do the same sort of thing but without loose chalk. And I've never done the loose chalk method because I find it, I've, I've never tried it, but I would imagine it's quite messy and we know what I'm like. So I'll probably end up with like chalk everywhere except where it's meant to be. There's another way of doing it as well. If you don't have a mannequin, you can tie, you can put chalk on a piece of string, tie it across the door, at a door, a, a door open doorway at the height that you want your skirt to be leveled, and then kind of gently move around and press the skirt against the chalk mark on the, on the door. But that is a very labor intensive way of doing it, especially when you can just measure. So um, this one I'm probably going to put on my dress form and measure up from the ground because there isn't a, a waistline for me to measure down from. Um, but for the Butterick 5951, there was a waistline for me to put the edge of my tape against and then have it be equal the whole way around. So there's loads of different ways of doing it. I don't know if I have a standalone video on how I do it, but there are videos in my channel on the sew alongs of how I've done it previously. Sorry, that was a lot of waffle, wasn't it? Um, Karen says, so lovely, thank you. Cecilia says, love the dress, thank you. Dolores says, hi, love the dress, love the colour, it's beautiful on you, thank you. And Lottie says, that would be a great standalone video. My current plan is to make a mark on the wall and turn and use my husband's power to mark the skirt. I personally, if it has a waist seam, I really like the tape measure and um, marking tool of choice method. I am. Um, I think that one's my favourite out of all the different ways that I've tried. I've got a Danny. Yeah, Mum has Dad. <laughs> uh, Anna says to see that, that device in action. Hale's more YouTube channel showed it in a bunch of times ago. If anybody is interested, ah, cool. Yeah, I keep meaning to try and have a look and see because somebody somebody found me one on eBay in America, and I was very tempted, but the postage was more than the price of the thing. <laughs> Um, Carol says, I have both the chalk and the pin hemmers, but no one to mark my hems. I have memories of my mother walking, uh, waking my earlier sleeper, my mother waking my earlier sleeper up to mark her hems. He was very willing. And Judy says, my family has just arrived, have to go. Great to hang out with you. Thank you for hanging out with us, Judy. Have a fun time. And Alison says, I have ordered a hot hemmer from eBay. You fold the fabric around the desired hem length and iron it. It has different edges for different hems. Oh, so Carol says dad. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I thought there was a word missing in there, but I wasn't sure what it was. Um, yes, uh, the, if, if it's a stable hem, Alison, yes, totally. Those kind of things are brilliant. But um, for what we've got going on here, because there's bias on it, we need to level the hem before we can then turn it up to press it. I think that's what everyone's talking about. But um, yeah, I'm pleased with this, but it is chilly. So I'm going to get back into my warm clothes <laughs> because brr. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. And I don't think these two panels being they were they, they were ever so slightly off grain I don't think it's going to make any difference to the to the wear of this but um I'm pleased I'm very pleased right I'm going to put my warm clothes back on and I'll be back in a second and get mum to help me get out this one as well did the dog not want to come in Obviously not. 
That's why she wasn't squeaking at us to get back in. She was waiting for Dan. Yes. When you get to a convenient location. <laughs> Thank you all. There you go. Thank you very much. I think I might just try and put a little bit more tension on that one. Ooh. <laughs> Nearly walked back into shot then. That would not have been good. But I have left my t shirt over there. <laughs> what are you going to do? Sorry, I've got it. No, I've got it. There's a disembodied arm floating in from off screen. <laughs> Why have you stopped? Uh. Yeah, I'm um, I'm pleased with how that's come out. It is a quick dress to make as well. So you can imagine that there's going to be quite a few more of those in my future because it's pretty. I am just going to undo the tacking that I've done on the facing at the front and just put it a little bit lower because at the moment it's just rolling out but just a touch so if I just stitch that in just a just a smidge not a lot Oopsie. just a smidge lower I think that'll help the facing to properly sit on the inside that's one of the reasons I don't really like facings because they do want to roll to the outside regardless of how much you try and tack them in place and make them behave where do we get to with the chat? Come back here. There we go. Whoopsie. Lottie says, my problem is the store-bought skirt has a really wonky waistband as well as the skirt having a three-inch difference. It's a shame. I love the fabric of it so much as I'm not sure it's worth the effort. Hmm. It'll be worth the effort if you feel better about wearing it. Um, but, yeah, if you've got a wonky waistband as well, that does make life a bit more difficult. Well, like, can, can you, I was going to say, could you do it from the top of the waistband or where the waistband meets the skirt? So which, 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 I'm guessing the top of the waistband is wonky? Um, let me know. Because if it's the top of the waistband that's wonky, do it from the seam which attaches it to the... Uh, the waistband to the skirt. If that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just gonna not a lot, just move it down a touch. We're talking like a couple of millimeters here. That's all I'm moving it down. But because I, I don't want to, I don't want it to be. I don't want to put too much tension on it the wrong way, and then have it roll the other way. And I want it to sit perfectly. And it was just there was just a little bit too much of it visible on the outside. So I'm going to. Just as I say, we tack this into place. I think that is the only thing that I use my dress form for is actually leveling hems. That's the only practical purpose I put that thing to. Otherwise, it is literally a decorative piece that I put my current works in progress on so that they're out of the way. I would like a dress form that I could drape on. Mm, that's what I was just going to say. I think that's what I would like. Yeah. But they're like the ones that I've seen are around eight, nine hundred pounds. It is. So one day, one day.
Where did I get to with chat? Where did we get to? Cecilia says, I love everything about that dress, but if I made myself one a waist seam is a must, I would recommend a different pattern or simply add one onto it. Hmm. I mean, you could, they, she very clearly marks in the waist point. That's where one of the sets of notches are. So you can very easily add a waist seam into it if you would like. I, there are lots of patterns out there with sweetheart necklines, but I, I mean, I do like this one a lot. This is my third one of these. Mum used this pattern for her dressmaker's ball dress and for um, one of her dresses that she used her Lisa Chandler fabric for. And the wedding one. Oh, and um, her white one for the wedding in Ibiza, where we were asked to wear white to a wedding. We weren't just being awful people. Um, yeah, we all thought it was a bit mad, but actually it looked- It like looked it. amazing, didn't it? And the people that wore color really stood out. Yeah like sore thumbs yeah if i ever get married again mine mine wouldn't be white i would tell people to wear turquoise or something <laughs> well blues shades of blue would be nice wouldn't it right so i'm gonna put this on the mannequin and then we can start going through some patterns So this has been sitting now for two two days on the mannequin with the hem dropping. I'm probably going to leave it another week just to really make sure because the last thing I want to do is have to re-level a hem if I've, once I've done it once. I, I, want, I want to do it once and then that's it. And um, fabrics like this do tend to keep growing. So I'm going to give it as much as much time to do its thing as possible. Right, okay, so where should we start? It, it would make sense to start at the left and just work our way over, wouldn't it? Well, I keep saying that I'm going to put all my patterns on my website and have a database of what I have and what I've made with links to the pattern because that's big. It'd be really good for Google. It would be really good um, for me referencing because Alexandra sent me a link yesterday or the day before saying Vogue patterns were three pounds each and Spotlight and did I want any? And I went looking and I was like, oh, I want so many. And then I didn't know how which ones I already had. So it would be good to have like an online reference of everything that I have. Um, just so that I don't buy the same pattern Makes twice. Sense. But it does mean that I've got to then input all of this onto my website, which is a task that I'm not looking forward to. But if I go and see Wilson, it would be a really good thing to have the um, mm. patterns photographed so that I could do that quietly in the background whilst he's working during the day. So we're gonna go through and photograph patterns. I'm gonna show the guys what I've got, which ones I've made already, and we're going to go from there. But I'm going for a bio break first. So don't move the mannequin. You've been told. I'm too deep in bubbles to move any mannequin.
pleased with that one. I knew it was going to be pretty, but definitely need to make more of those. <laughs> right, where did I get to with the chat? Ah, uh, where did I get to? Where did I get to? Where did I get to? Haruka Winter says, How's your day been? Very good so far, thank you. How's yours? Charlie says it's very pretty, thank you. Lottie says it's all wonky, so hence the husband's assistance. I don't care if it isn't perfect, but there is current such a big drop, it's really obvious. Yeah, that would bug me. Um, yeah, I think you might need husband's assistance then and just go around. Uh, Alison says, could you drape with an adjuster form super fit or Diana? Not that I'm aware. I have an adjust, this is an adjuster form. Um, it's a lady ballet. And um, it's it's a canvas covering over hard plastic, so you can't put pins in it um, at, at 90 degree angle. You can pin to it, um, but that's not how you, that was not what you need for draping. Um, yeah, I, I bought this many years ago. I think I've told you guys this before. I think it was just one of those things where it was like, I want to start dress making. So like, that's clearly what I need. And it really hasn't been helpful. Um, at all other than to display pretty dresses and I've had uh, in my uh, when I wasn't quite sewing as often I had some of my pretty vintage dresses on it and it was literally that was that was and one of my petticoats because it was a it was a better way of storing a petticoat rather than taking up room in the cupboard at the time because the cupboards were so full so yeah yeah um, Anessa says, Sean, have you considered a custom one from Bootstrap Online? Yes, I have. And um, that is a definite possibility. I need to have a look at that seriously, definitely. Um, Lottie says, Anessa was just typing the same thing. It's a bit like the Carla Patterns. I think it's the same company, um, or the, it's at least the same software for sure. Yes, I have seen the Bootstrap ones. That is a definite um, a pit, uh, option, definitely. Rachel Lynn says, you know, I think you could, I think you ate beforehand just so you, we couldn't move the mannequin. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, Anessa says, great wines and all Lottie, lol. I want one, but my sewing skills aren't up to that yet. Um, Cecilia says, I went through all my patterns last week and wrote them all down thinking about making a photo log on my phone of all the categories. That was the second thing I was thinking is that it would be very nice to have them on my um, phone as well as on my website. So um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, Lottie says, haha, exact same reasoning here. Jennifer says, use my mind skills to move the mannequin. <laughs> Cecilia says, briar break equals coffee time. Um, Jennifer says, wait, I have no mind skills. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel Lynn says, move the mannequin, move, did that work? <laughs> Anessa says, Lottie, actually I have a duct tape one. It wasn't fun to make, lol, and within a month of making it, managed to accidentally lose three sizes, so it's useless. Yeah, that's my other, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to get into dress making um, uh, or pattern making via draping. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Eileen says, have any of you used Trello for cataloging your patterns and material, etc.? I've heard Tamlin of Sewn on the Time talk about it. I, lots of people use it and love it. Um, it's just, like I say, the, the reason that I'm going to put mine on my website is because I have a website that, I have spent money on and has that facility to store it. And I think it would be a useful resource for you guys as well. Yes. Yeah. Because if you wanted to see if I've made a pattern before, you could put it into search and like you put the pattern 7722 in and it would come, come up with the pattern. But then if I had made it or put a sew, done a sew along for it, there would be links to those, those um, resources for it. So it's, and it's also a really good Google SEO search tool because people Google patterns quite a lot. And if you have put the SEO words in, then yours will come up as a result. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a form of 
of um, Google optim optimization for my website as well. Um, Lossie says, oh, Eileen, I have, well, I started anyway. Helen's Closet did a big blog post about how she uses it. Sar says, moving the mannequin, my legacy here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what have you started, Sam? What have you started? Okay, so anyway, so as I was saying, 7722, it is a t-shirt pattern with leg o mutton um, or cold shoulder options. I probably, I really want to make B. It was part of, um, I said I was going to make it during top month and I never got around to it. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, I want to make that. What fabrics does it say it should? Cotton knits and jersey sweater knits and interlock. So it needs to have some stability to it. Right. Photo time, here we come. Now, can I start an album? I want a new album, yes. Patterns, save. Oh, I can add photos to it afterwards. Okay, so I have to take the photos first and then go through and add them. I'm sure there's another way of doing it, but never mind, we'll do it this way, it'll be fine. Okay, so we're in the t-shirt section at the moment. We're in the we're gonna go through my printed patterns first. At some point I'm gonna to have to catalog my uh, PDF patterns. I have, have them cataloged on my laptop really easily, but I don't have photographic reference of what I've got. So next we've got 8003, which is a relatively new one. I got this as part of my pattern swap from at Christmas and I really like it. I really, really like it. So that's another one that I need to make soon. I think this one is for jersey, rib knits, and interlock. Ooh, stretch lace. Yeah, that would be pretty. And this is a very old one, which I think I've cut out in the smallest size, fun times. Um, Vogue 7933. Definitely one that I want to make soon, 6285. Love the skirt, love the top, need to make it. Um, Simplicity, 8375. Basic hacking t-shirt. So, quite a few options with that. I think that came with one of the, yeah, um, Sew so Magazine. This one's 7471. I really like this. Again, it was part of top month that never really happened because I made those camisoles and they were all horrendous. They weren't horrendous, but it um, knocked my confidence. And I have the small size bundle and then the larger size bundle with this one. So I'm gonna put that over there. Did I take a, yeah, I, I had to take a photo of that one. Then we've got Vogue 9281. Really like this, Emily. I bought this because Emily Hallman had made a dress out of this and it looked beautiful on her. However, I'm gonna have to add shoulder straps to it so I can wear a normal bra. Um, but I really like that, I like that a lot. Then we've got the Soaholic Renfrew tee, which this pattern keeps ending up in mum's stash. She doesn't put it back in mine when she's finished with it. Nice. It's not. It was expensive and I bought it. <laughs> Goes in my stash. I'm that way I know where it, it again soon. That way I know where it is when I need it when I make it. Because I went to look for my for the instructions and it wasn't where it usually lives. And it was like, what have I done with it? <laughs> um so next we've got the ultimate sweater set. Um ooh. jersey cotton or viscose knits, sweater knits. Kind of like a, a, a mock neck or a, a, a higher-necked T-shirt. 
Um, next we have 6709, again, which is part of my pattern swap. Really like the option on A for that one. I would wear mine tucked in. I don't think I would ever do this version. Then we've got Berta 7646, which I think is one that Kay from Sunny Nunny sent me. Um, I liked this because it was a really basic one that I could see myself playing around with and hacking the different options off. Is it for um, two-way stretch only? Yeah. Then we've got uh, 6351. It says it's from Anna. And I really like all the options of these. Emily Horman has just made the jacket from this, and it looks really cute. But I have put it in my T-shirt stash because I really liked the um, the T-shirt, the V-neck T-shirt from this. Then we've got Simplicity 8376. It's another hacking one. So again, a really basic t-shirt block with options of different ways you can play around with that one. Then we've got 7243. I have made the dress, this dress version from this, and you guys never saw that because it was awful on me. Absolutely awful. But I did really like the neckline of it. And if I had made version A, which is the top, I think I would have really liked it. So I want to re revisit this one because I really do like this one. Then we've got Vogue 7997. Again, this is another old one. I haven't cut this one out though. Um, so again, I would probably make, uh, I like all of them actually, the, the different sleeve lengths is the option, different options with them, but I would put straps on it so I could wear a normal bra. Then we've got Simplicity 8609. I like the skirt on this. And I also very much like the t-shirt op options on this. I need to make this. And then we've got the thread, thread count patterns, two in one jersey top. I like the crossover detail on the front of A. I wouldn't probably make this version with the um, the, the, the frill at the front, but I would make the other one. And we've got 8025. Again, another crossover front one. I think this is really fun. I wouldn't make it in velvet, but I do like it a lot. We've got McCall 7574. Like this very much. Mum likes this t-shirt as well. She saw this and was like, ooh, yes. And then finally, 7812. And I really want to make view A, view B, and view D. I would make the skirt longer, though. I'd make the skirt come down to around about here. So I might need to add panels in it to, uh, so that I could cut that out the way I would want to. But I very much like this. So that is my paper patterns t-shirt collection. Let's see. Where did I get to? Um, Lottie says, oh, Eileen, I have, I, well, I started anyway. Helen's, oh, I've read that one, sorry. Um, Aunt B Creation says, I better get to doing something today. Have fun. Thank you. Hope you've enjoyed hanging out with us. Jojo says, I tried Trello, but cannot get on with it. I'm definitely an analog pencil and paper kind of girl, though I do love a spreadsheet. <laughs> Uh, and Natalie says, I love pattern making, need a new mannequin. I've had mine since I was 13 and I'm now 28. Safe to say she looks a bit drunk. <laughs> uh, Johnny says, ah, oh, hello, yes. I have been told this is where I come to find Lego, yes. <laughs> I haven't gotten any for the, in the last three and a half hours, Johnny, I'm sorry. <laughs> Eleanor says, good morning. Good morning, Eleanor, how are you? Rachel Lynn says, I've got to run, have fun. Thank you for joining us, Rachel Lynn. And Natalie says, I'm off ski peeps. Thanks for the hangout, Sean. Always appreciate. No, no worries, Natalie. Welcome. And so glad the lining went in well for you. And Cecilia says, I've been wearing off my, my off shoulder tops with regular bra, just pinning my straps to the tops or just pushing them down. 
see, I can't do that. If I do that, the bra, the whole bra goes. I need to be able to have a, either a strapless bra or the shoulder support. Right, well, anyway, so that is this section photographed. See, this is not gonna take me very long to do at all. I'm very glad that you guys are here keeping me company while I do it. Right, so next we have cover-ups, or what I've designated cover-ups. So I've I've kind of like put my put my um, patterns into those kind of categories that make sense to me. Like the the one with the jacket, the t-shirt, the skirt, and the trousers. The part that I was the most interested in was the t-shirt, which is why it went into that one. Although I do have a section up here, which you'll see in a minute, called wardrobes so you know there's, there's lots of different ways of organizing your patterns this is just how i've done mine so the next one is simplicity 8265 and it is i think something yes yeah, so magazine i really like this this was a contender for oh no it needed stretch i was going to say it was a contender for the um parrot fabric but it does have a center back seam as well so it wouldn't have worked but i do like that And this is from um, my pattern swap with Elizabeth at Christmas, the 8419 uh, Simplicity pattern. I just really liked that. And I think you don't need overly much of fabric to, to put that together. So like some of that silk that Rachel's just made her kimono out of, could definitely see myself making, using some like of that or something like this. Next up, we have Simplicity 8648. I have some lemon print fabric that I want to make one of these in. Mum has made one of these, but she ended up donating it, which I was really sad about because she used some fabric we got from Ibiza that technically half of it was mine and I gave it to her and she's given it away. And I'm sad. But um, yeah, I think this is a really nice pattern as well. Then we've got McCall's 7790. Again, another one that I really want to make. And Simplicity 8505, which is like a caftan pattern. And I can imagine if you had some beautiful fabric, this would be a good one to use it for. It does have the waist detailing on the front, but there's no waist detailing on the back. So I might work out a way if I, if I made one to just give it a little bit of shape at the back as well. But I like that. Okay, so that's my cover-ups. Like I say, this isn't gonna take us long at all, is it? Did we get two with the chat? Anessa says, Sean, is there a reason you're not taking pictures of the back so you have reference to two fabric requirements? Um, I don't want to have so many pictures on my phone. And the idea is that I will, as I say, be putting these onto my website. And the majority of these are still available. And you can see both sides online. So it's more of a, a reference to the picture on the outside um yeah i <laughs> it's it's sheer, sheer laziness and not wanting to have so many um um photos on my phone um but yeah probably would have been a better i would it mm, should i go back and take photos of everything yeah i don't want to it's a good idea Mm. 
She says, oh, I was just wondering. Yeah, it, this is more, like I say, this is a reference to them put the pictures online. These photos are not what I'm going to use to put these online. It's going to be the stock photos that I find online that are way better quality. And as I say, you can get the, those that information off most of them. But then do I want it on my phone for reference? Uh Oh, Anessa, why didn't you say that earlier? <laughs> Sal says, just imagine if people on front of patterns came to life, like in Toy Stories, in Toy Story, your, pla your place would be covered in tiny people. It would be. It would be indeed. Right, this is next section is simple tops. Um, I think I need to put this into my to be donated bag because I have made three of these now and I don't like it <laughs> on me. I like it on other people. I don't like it on me. So I think this needs to, to go into the donate pile. That makes sense, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Next, we have another pattern hacking one. This was from Sew Magazine. It is 8658. And... I like this. I would always wear it tucked in. In fact, I might even put in elastic at the waist to help define the waist and then wear a belt over it if I, because I find I find with patterns that um, if you just, if you, if you're relying on having just tucked it in and then you're moving around for the day, I find that they can, they can, ruching in ways that you don't want them to whereas if you've put in a definition of a elastic at the waist that at least kind of makes it behave itself and stay together better in my opinion so i think dad's home if you haven't heard the I'll crash bangs <laughs> they don't have to shut the door it's fine sure? yeah just just if anyone's wondering what the crash and bangs yeah. were um it's a fabric washing fairy it is I'm going to start taking pictures of the backs of these things now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, next we've got Simplicity 8593. Again, this is a one from Sew Magazine, and it's a vintage one, which you do tie at the waist, front and back. It's really warm again. Yeah. I'll open the windows now. Do you mind, Sean? I'm perfectly fine as is. Leave her alone then. It's only really 22 degrees. You're the one, you've just been out doing things, so yeah. you're way warmer than us who've been sitting still and lizard like. Okay, next we've got 6532. Oh, I really like the, I like all of these options, but the top in this one was particularly nice. Next is New Look 6086. Mum has made this one, although she fell out with it because it's a very wide neckline. And we rescued it by adding a cow neck to it, but it was still not her favourite. Yeah. I haven't made it yet, though. Okay, next we've got... New look 6483. Um, again, a very, very simple top. Haven't made this one as yet. This was a present from Kay from um, Sunny Nunny, who got it for a pound from the charity shop. Um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't tried it. So I'm not 100% sure if it is going to be for me, but it does have a bit more sort of shaping in it than the McCall's one. We'll see. I'll give it a try eventually at some point. It says one hour easy. Oh, it sounds like me. It's it does have sleeves. Uh, next is one of my vintage. Well, one of my original vogues that I bought is seven eight two seven. I haven't made this one as yet either. I really like the butterfly top. I think that's pretty. I like um, B as well, although. I don't think, I think, because there's a lot of ruching in these two, I'm not sure if I, if I do that. Uh, 
Okay, then we've got McCall's 4516. Again, this was a very early days one. I have made one of these before. And so I don't know what size I cut out of it. This is the small to medium. I probably cut the extra small. We'll, we shall see. This is why you trace your patterns, people. Again, you don't have to. That's why I trace my patterns, because I would very much like to have not cut the smaller size of these. And then the last one that I have in my simple tops category is McCall's 6927, which is basically a longer version of that other McCall's top. So again, not made that one as yet. Well, she'll see. <laughs> Nessa says, I'm sorry. Don't be daft, Nessa. I'm teasing. <laughs> Donna says, hi, Sean. May I ask your mum a question, please? What type of thread does she use for quilting? Is it 100% cotton? Thank you. Isocord. Mum uses isocord embroidery thread for everything. <laughs> You're not meant to, but again, it works for her. My, so Yeah, my machine likes it. It's yes. shiny. Yes. But I mean, she uses it for everything. But again, yeah, I do have the, the quilting isocord as well, these. She's now just throwing things around out there. There we go. Oh dear. Um, so yeah, isocord, embroidery thread, and quilting thread. Um, no, it's not. It's not cotton, is it? Um, yeah, I think it is. I don't think they are. Does it not say on the top? That's the thousand meters. No. FB four six two zero. That's its colour. Have to investigate now. No, don't worry, don't worry, I'm going to Google. Isocord thread is polyester embroidery thread that works well in any machine. Yeah. yeah. Cotton thread tends to break a lot easier, doesn't it? Right. So, uh, Nimue says, I'm going to leave you for some ice cream on the patio and might come back later. Oh, I've got ice cream in my freezer. Oh, thank you for reminding me, Nimue. I had forgotten. <laughs> Fingers crossed it looks like we might get some much appreciated thunderstorm. Oh, enjoy. Dagmar says, "Would I would also use both to quickly be able to see what fabric amounts needed, but then I'm totally newbie and really have no clue. No, no, Anessa is right. I should have been taking photos of the back of the patterns as well. Should I redo the ones that I've done already? Yeah. Mine are one off. Um, Kim says, I use Isocord for quilting too. My local quilting shop recommends it. It's polyester. And Donna says, thank you, Jane and Sean. No worries. Right, I'm going to get the other patterns that I've already photographed back out to re-photograph them. <laughs> so it's not going to be as quick as I thought, but only because I've messed up. <laughs> Good suggestion. Thank you for pointing it out at the start of the process, yeah. not at the end. Yes, that would have been... Sad. That would have been less than helpful. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, for me, I bought my machine from a place called Tyso, and the thread that they recommend, I love. Mum hates it. Um, my machine loves it. It's so fluffy. I, I sew everything. I embroider with it as well. I bought it because it was cheaper than embroidery thread and I wanted to see what I thought about machine embroidery and I really like it. And at some point I am going to buy the entire Isocord embroidery thread collection and drawers to store it in. But again, that's £1,100. So at some point in the future. Right. Let's go back and get rid of the photos that I haven't taken both sides of. It was lovely, wasn't it? The lady I did that quilting for, 
gave yes. you two boxes, didn't she? No, she, she, she gave you a selection box yeah. for Christmas. Lovely. Yeah, she mum had done a quilt for her. She didn't know what to get mum as a thank you. She she rang us and asked dad and I what she should get. And we said, What's your budget? Because <laughs> technically the thousand pound one would have been if mum was charging a proper amount of money for it and not for just a friend, would have been perfectly reasonable. Um but no, <laughs> she but she did get her a set of um icicle threads for Christmas. Yeah, which was lovely. Which was very lovely. And but her name's Jane as well. So when um mom, when mum was opening the packet, she was like, I bought myself a present. What's this? I don't understand. And it's like, no, it's from the other Jane. It's like, ah. It made more sense then. Right. Just, just, just bear with me while I redo all the thing that I've already done, but badly. Now I'm going to do it properly. Here we go. My phone's going to be at the end of this. My phone's going to be like, you've got too many photos. You need more storage space. Uh. Okay, getting there. Princess Wade says, "Well, it's been fun. I bid you peeps farewell. Thank you for hanging out with us." Alison says, "I like um, raw scent thread. It's great value for money, and a lot of quilters use it. It's also good quality. I've never heard of that. Is it an Australian brand? What was it called?" Um, R A S E N T. <laughs> um, Princess Wade says, Bye, Sean. Bye. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. Alison says, I also use Gutterman, but it isn't as cost effective like Rascent. I've never heard of it. Like I say, is it, is it an Aussie brand? So I'm going to be putting the patterns on my website by brand, but I'm also going to be putting them on by um, garment type as well. So hopefully it should be easily searchable. That is the plan. Caroline says, found it on eBay in the UK. Ah, cool. I'm going to do the top shelf of these and then I'm going to call it a day today because I still have some editing to do this evening. You have to do what? Some editing this evening. Mm. When do I not have editing to do? But yeah, how do you guys feel about some more of this next weekend? Because as you can see, I have many, many patterns to do. Although I may well have got some different projects cut out at that point to perhaps do something different. So, um, but yeah, there will be a hangout next Sunday which should be fun. So let me know what you think. I know, I know I've done my pattern collection videos, which I need to update because there's, there's a lot of new ones since I did those. Um, which would be a slightly more formal setting than this. But we, we shall see, we shall see.
Okay, nearly done. Okay. Okay. So now that I've done it all properly, we can move on. Whoopsie. Successful shopping, Danny? Yeah. I'll leave some in the cupboard, okay? Oh, sorry, I didn't bring honey down. Okay, so now we're moving on to my wardrobe classification. And I need to just make a note on this one because this was a gift from the lovely Nancy. So this is, I think this is my newest pattern actually. Not that it's a new pattern, but my newest to me pattern. It's the new look 6182, which the lovely Nancy sent me because she thought I would like it as an alternative to a standard three piece suit. And she's right. And then we've got Simplicity 4192, which is out of print, but there are newer versions of this without, which I don't think they have the bra top and the t-shirt in the newer versions, but they have the little wrap top and the wrap trousers. And I love these. You, I've, you've seen me make these a couple of times. And then this one was part of my pattern swap with Daisy May, and I haven't put her name on this one, so I'm going to do that now. And it is the McCall's 5193, and it has, uh, right, so it has the jacket, the waistcoat, the trousers, and the skirt in there. And um, I want to make a three-piece suit out of this with that cashmere silk suiting that I got from Sherwood Fabrics. I have five and a half meters of it, so I think I'm gonna be able to make trousers, jacket, and waistcoat. I don't think I'll be able to get the skirt as well. Um, where did I get to with the chat? Nicholas says, I got a super bargain at a cherry shop of about 200, 250 reels of ice cord embroidery thread of various sizes of spools for 25 pounds. Ah. Most of them different colors. I shared them with mum. Wow. That's amazing. Um, whoever put the, gave that to the charity shop either it didn't know what they had or just didn't didn't want that anymore. <laughs> wow. Uh, Dagmar says there will be will be there regardless of what you decide to do. It's a fun Sunday morning activity while sorting the mail, folding laundry, etc. Well, I'm glad you like joining us. Sal says, I just found a few copies of the first edition of HP Lovecraft, The Call of Cthulhu, 1928 on eBay. I know what my next big buy is. Oh, cool. That Donna's a, a book, first edition book. Donna says, does anyone know what Lyo cell fabric is and is it the same as Tencel? I think it's similar, but I don't know for sure. Um, let us know, anybody that does know. Cecilia says, Sean, you may have already shared with us, but what is your method of planning for work and life? Do you bullet journal or use a planner? Thought I'd give organizing my time a try. So I do. Okay, I did bullet journal for a while and there's a couple of videos on my channel about that. And then I was using my Filofax because I found that with bullet journaling, I enjoyed it, but I was doing the same layouts day in, day out. And I never changed it up because it, what I found what worked for me. And then I got bored of having to draw out the same grids all the time. So I went back to DIY Fish, which is a set of inserts that I um, found on Etsy. And I've still got my July diary in there. But it's like a day on two pages. So it's got like the times on it. Um, an empty page which I put my to-do lists on then um, 
like little spaces over here, which I really enjoyed. This is actually a new system from Filofax, and the um, the paper it's 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 kind of like the ring binders that the, the um, disc binders you you can that if you've got the right hole punch, the papers take on an offable. Um, so I bought myself this and I really like it. It's the best of both worlds because I can still journal in it like I did with my bullet journal and be creative. But I can also, with my bullet journal, I got precious about not making rough notes because I didn't want anything messy in there. And this, because I can take the paper in and out, I can rough journal, you know, make rough notes and things in it. Um, it's been in my bag for a while. I do use it. I haven't printed out August's diary and I'm not going to because we're halfway through August and I am finding myself being less organized and with stuff that I have coming up over the next couple of months, I'm going to start printing out my diary and being more organized with to-do lists and things again because I just, it's nice to get it out of my head and onto paper. Um, so... I kind of go through phases of planning and and writing things out and then not planning and feeling a bit more disorganized. So I really like this this system. As I said, it's from Filofax. The thing I don't like about this is that it's um very plastic feeling. I like my I liked my bullet journals because they were the Loistrom ones, which felt really nice. And then I like my Filofax because it is leather. I've also bought a uh, traveler's notebook leather cover which this fits into um, and would give it more protection and I'm, I'm tempted to, to use that but then I also wanted something that was thin enough that I could travel with it easily and um, when I was traveling <laughs> which I'm not at the moment so uh, yeah but I do really like this system I'm just not overly keen on the actual outside of the notebook itself because it's whilst it's a hardback notebook it's not as nice as the leather ones that I have. Um, but yes, I do take notes. <laughs> and I do feel a lot more organized when I write things down uh, than I do at the moment. I'm just kind of winging, winging August and it's showing. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry, where were we? Chat. Alison says, Restaurant Thread is made by a German company the Aman Group, who also make I support. I can't post the web address on due to YouTube. Um, don't worry, but there, that's great. Thank you. And so Celia says, Sal, I have a friend who has a gorgeous Cthulhu tattoo on his calf. I've not read the book, but it's cool. So I need to do need to do it now. Alison says there is a cover stitch machine at the charity shop near where my friend lives. That's a Genomi One Thousand. The shop is closed at the moment, but my friend will get it for me. Nice. And Cecilia says, right there with you on the on off thing. My head always feels too full when I don't write things down. That was why I liked the bullet journal side of things because it didn't matter if you missed days and months because you didn't have to draw them in or write them in. And with the DIY fish ones, you, you buy the entire year. And then I print out at a month ago and the days that I don't use, I feel like I've wasted the space but I, I haven't because I, I then take it out and use it as note paper so it's not the end of the world it doesn't go to waste as it were um but I like this one because it's kind of a mix of both and um, anyway back to patterns like I said <laughs> so next we've got the new look 6438 it's kind of like a cover-up t-shirt and trousers I think I ought to put that back in the trousers one because I think it's the trousers that I'm going to make more often than any of the other things. But then I did like all of them, so I'm going to leave it in the wardrobe. So <laughs> it'll be fine. Then we've got New Look 6573. Again, this was with a magazine. I really liked how this looked, that outfit looks on her though. Um, and I like the dress. I don't think the dress would suit me, but I do like the dress. And I really, like I say, like this entire look here. But it came with a magazine. Next, we've got McCall's 7962, which is top and top of trousers um, which I really really like all of them 
I mean, I'm going to say I like all of them a lot because I, you know, most of these I bought. The ones that I'm not overly sure about are usually ones that uh, came free with magazines, and I bought it for a specific, like it was a multiple patterns with the magazine, and I bought it for one of the other ones. Um, but uh, yeah, so next we have McCall's seven nine three seven which is top and trousers. I really like this particular top and these trousers. I think they're really cool. I don't think I would ever do A or C of the tops, but I do like B a lot, although I think I would probably make it longer so that it came to the waistband of the trousers. Next is a very old pattern that I've had, B8138. I have made the, have I made the tunic from this one? No, I haven't. I haven't made any. Oh, it's this one. Next one that I have. I haven't made anything from this one yet, but I do like the cover up a lot in that. Then we've got Butterick 6258. I have made the long sleeved tunic out of this a couple of times. I don't think I've kept any of them though. I think I gave them all to my niece but I do like the long line cardigan in that one as well. Then we've got Simplicity 8462. I love all of the options in this. I think it's really, really lovely. I have made something very similar, but I haven't actually used this particular pattern. Then we've got Simplicity 8093. It's a Mimi G pattern with the top trousers and a jacket. I like the jacket a lot. I can see myself making the top and the trousers as well. I like Mimi G patterns because there's always a sew along for them as well, which I think is a really nice touch. And then we've got 8177, which again is top trousers and an over like waistcoat or a jacket. And again, I really like how this outfit looks on her. I have not made it as yet though. Okay, so I'm going to put these ones back. You do front and back? Yes. Well done. Yes, now that I'm doing that, I have remembered. These are my Vogue options patterns. And I put them in a group together because I remember them better that way. Although they could very easily have gone into dresses, knit dresses, that kind of thing. So the first one is the 8997. So along is coming. Love this. Love this a lot. I will make another one with a shorter skirt on it or no although not the skirt that is as short as this one is. I want a kind of in between the two and I will make it with the fluttery sleeves. It will look very similar to this, but it's got a different, it's got like an empire seam at the top there, which is nice. And again, you can play around with color blocking on that. Then we've got the Vogue 8998. I need to make this one. I like it a lot. I really like the neoprene one that they've put her in. She looks beautiful in that. Then we've got 8727, which again is beautiful. I wouldn't make the halter versions because they are backless. I would make view D, E and F, although I probably wouldn't make D because it's got this pencil skirt on it. So E and F, um, and the difference between those is the longer and shorter um, skirts, but I really like that one. Where did I get to with the chat? Uh, Alison says no quick sew patterns. Oh, they're in a different spot. Um, Sal says to Cecilia, I highly recommend reading it. It's terrifying and brilliant. Caroline says, sorry, I'll watch the rest later, but my late night, early morning is getting to me. No worries, Caroline. Thank you for joining us. I'm nearly done anyway. I'm nearly through. <laughs> Uh, Donna says, have you ever made yourself a cape? I'm thinking of making one for the fall, but wondering how practical it is. I haven't as yet, um, but I would like to. 
And Caroline says, Donna, I have one and love it. Capes, capes for the win. If you've watched Bernadette Banner's latest video, you'll know that she loves capes too. Okay, so next we've got 8470, which is another really pretty dress. Again, is it, I think it's backless on some of the versions, so I wouldn't make those, but I would make A, B, and C, and D. Like that a lot. Yes. Then we've got V9, sorry, V9313, which was a present from Laurie Ann. It is a wrap dress with borders on it. I like that a lot. And it's got a yoke on the back of the, oh. Then we've got 8648. I haven't made this one, but mum has. I like it. Then we've got 8948. I haven't made this as yet. This was something that I was contemplating using my parrot, the cockatoo fabric for, because it has a solid front panel. But I want to make this, but I'm not sure it would suit me. I think I need to give it a go at some point in the future. Although I don't think this size is gonna go up to the size of my butt, so I have to do some altering for that. Next, we've got 8902, which I like the color blocking options a lot. Again, it would be D, E, and F that I would make. Then we've got 8667. I really like the neckline, the collary little doodad on this. I think that's lovely. Then uh, Vogue 9267, which I like a lot. I like that version a lot. Then 9239, love this. I think it's awesome. I would probably put elastic around the bottom of these types of sleeves, but I might make these, these ruffly sleeves. Then we've got 8972, which I have made 14 of in scuba. I need to have a go at making this in a woven fabric as it is designed, because it would be interesting to see how it would turn out, I think but I love my scuba versions of this and there is a sew along for this. And then finally, it's 9328, which I think is absolutely beautiful and is going to be part of my September or my um, rest of the year sewing plans. I'm definitely gonna be making this one. It has a really cool circular cutout in the back. I don't know if you guys can see that. But yeah, if you see, if you see, there's gonna be at least one of those made this, this, um, this, this next couple of months. Uh, Alison says good night to Caroline. Jennifer says I finished cleaning in the kitchen, a nice mini deep clean while listening to Sean. And I asked Alexa what time it is, and then she offers me tips for cleaning. I wonder if she was judging my work. <laughs> How very dare she? Cecilia says Sal, I love old literature, so it's a must. Jojo says, Ooh, I can hear thunder rumbling, thunderbolt and lightning, very, very frightening me. Yes, I'm, I'm not going to sing any more than that. Um, Sal says, I made a cake for my Dracula cosplay, five meters by two meters of black satin and red stretch velvet. Um, yes, there's there's a couple of Vogue patterns, capes that I would like to try. Cecilia says, I'm absolutely making a cape for this year. I crocheted a wrap capelet that I wear. It's so much fun for fall. I have a wool cape that I do wear a lot and I highly recommend. Um, yeah. Donna says, you have all sold me on the idea of a cape. Next project for sure. <laughs> I'm glad we were helpful. Oopsie. 
So my um, index cards keep falling out. Okay. So next I have my Gertie dresses. So I've got Butterick 6412. I've not made this yet. Mum's made it and she hated it and has donated it since. Um, but I haven't tried it as yet. And I would like to because I think it's really pretty. So I'm going to give that a go at some point in the future. Which one is that? The Cobra Corsage in Cream. Oh, I guess. Uh, then we've got 6556. I know Rachel's making one of these at the moment. Um, I haven't made this one, but it is very similar to the night and day dress, except for the notch. And I used the night and day dress because it had cup sizes on it. And um, But I would like to make this one because I found the night and day dress. The straps were very long on it. So yeah, but it's very similar to the night and day dress. So you don't need both if you have one. Although, I mean, the night and day dress does have way more options in it. So if you're going to buy one, I would buy that one. Then we've got 6094, really like that. And so haven't made it as yet. This one was from Tracy from one of my pattern swaps. Then we've got 6590, really want to give that a go. I think it's really pretty and interesting. This one was from Lorianne as a present. Then we've got 6483. I haven't made it for myself, but I did make it as a, as a wedding dress for a customer and it looked beautiful. Um, I did work a way out of way of fully lining the bodice as well, which is not what it calls for, but I wanted to do that because the customer had picked a heavier weight, what turned out to be upholstery fabric and it was slightly scratchy. So I wanted to make sure that the bodice was lined and I worked out a way of doing it. I don't know if I could do it again. We should find out when I try and make that one, but yeah. Then we've got 6413. I love the bodice of this. I probably, I mean, I obviously won't make the pencil skirt because that's not just not me. I would add a fuller skirt to this, but I do really like how the bodice turned out. It's very Marilyn Monroe, I think in Niagara. She wears a green one of these. And again, I keep my Gertie dresses together the same way as I keep my Vogue dresses together just because it makes sense to me and that's where I know to find them. Next, we've got the 6352, the dirndl looking dress. Haven't made it yet, really want to. I think it's really pretty. Then we've got 6322, which is again from Tracy for one of the pattern swaps. Now I wasn't going to get this pattern, but then I saw somebody had made one up in the wild and it looked beautiful. So I was like, okay, yeah, I need that. And so I have it. And then the final Gertie one is 6380, which I've just finished. The sleeves on this thing are ridiculously tight, although I am going to take the sleeves from this and make them into flutter sleeves like I did with this one. And I can do a tutorial on that if you guys would like. Um, it's just a slash and spread method. Um, but I absolutely love this dress and there is going to be more in my future. Many, many more. So that's my Gertie dresses. Gertie for Butterick. I don't think I have any Gertie for Simplicity, although we'll see when we get there. So then I have my two Simplicity sleeve extension packs. This one was from Lorianne, it's the 8695. There are some pretty awesome sleeves in there that I definitely need to give a go. I like D especially. And I'm intrigued to see how these work because I've never used this pattern before, so I'm not overly sure. And then we have the 8506 which again has some pretty awesome sleeves in it. I really like that one. I think that's really interesting. And again, I have no idea how this actually corresponds to bodices. So I think this would be fun to have, to have a play around with. And I want to do that with some of the stuff I want to make in autumn.
And now we're into my vintage dresses. So technically this one is not a vintage dress, but it's very vintage looking as you guys have all agreed. It's the 5951, which I've just finished making and the sew along is coming out for that, which I really, really like it. Then we've got the 6242, which was from Joe. I really like that one as well. Then we've got Butterick 6582, and I have two copies of this, which is great because one of them I cut out um, at a previous time. I've had these for a while, so I bought myself a second copy of it at, <laughs> so that I have all of the sizes again, although it is a very small size bundle from the 12, 14, and 16 in this, but it's a really, really pretty dress. Then we've got 4513. This is one of my early ones, which I have cut out at the smallest size or at size eight, and I'm gutted. This is nearly 30 quid to replace it. So I keep looking on Etsy and, and eBay to see if I can find a replacement copy for it because I really like this dress and I would like to make it again, but <laughs> I need the size that will fit. Then we've got Butterick 5556. Again, that's a really pretty dress. Then we've got another one that I've already cut out at the smallest size, the 5412. So again, I'm looking to replace this one. Although this one is not so much of a, um, a priority because it is a backless dress. I have I, I made this and wore it to my brother's second wedding in goldfish fabric. I have since pulled that dress apart and need to, need to have a look at making something with what I've got left of the fabric. Then we've got Butterick 5813 which is gorgeous. Um, I, again, I will probably only ever make this one. And then I've got the second size set of this one. So that needs to go back with that. Then we've got 6211 and there's a couple of people who've made this up recently and they actually put in because it's meant to be like the walkaway dress, it's meant to just fit, do up with these buttons. And lots of people, when they've made it, have said that it doesn't hang right because it, all the pressure's hanging off of those buttons. So the people that have made it, have made it up and actually top stitched all of this down and made it decorative and then put a zip in the back and it looks gorgeous. So that was one of the reasons I hadn't made this up until now was because I didn't like how it went together, but now that somebody has just been like, yeah, put a zip in, it's like, genius. So I can see that high up on my to be made pile. Then we've got the 6018, which I love, really love it. Um, I moved this, I've done a sew along for this, I moved the side zipper to the back and totally no problems with that whatsoever. Now really, really like it. Need to make more. Then we've got the infamous Butterick seven, sorry, four seven nine zero, the walkaway dress. I haven't made this as yet because I've heard there's so many problems with fitting this thing, and I think I would do it very differently to how they've done it. I wouldn't. I would have the front because the front, the front skirt is more of pencil like, and the back is the one with all the fullness, and that un weights the dress further to the back so it makes lots of pulling issues so um there's lots of there's edelweiss blog has done a really good fitting tutorial for that dress next we've got 6212 which is another wraparound walkaway style dress which i love the neckline on this um i would be tempted again to turn that into a proper zip up back dress rather than a walk away one, but I haven't seen anybody attempt this one yet. So maybe I ought to give it a go. Walk away dresses or wrap around dresses were very popular, weren't they? Then we've got the, just the walk away dress is meant to, you meant to be able to make it in the morning and walk away that afternoon having <laughs> made it. So, yeah, it's meant to be that easy. All right. 
Um, then we've got the 4919, which I actually have, I start, I made this and I really like it. I started a sew along for it and I stopped because there was more stuff that I wanted to change in this. This one was a present from Michelle and she very kindly sent me both size bundles. So I have both of those. Ah, now this one, this one I love. I love it. It is 5880. I think it's gorgeous. I just don't think it would suit me. But I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to keep it. So far, I've only got rid of one pattern, haven't I? I'm not doing very well. Um, oh, that QR code takes you to Professor Pincushion. She's done a sew along for it. That's clever. Um, yeah, I'd like to make it, but I don't know if it's very me. Then we've got the 6055, which was another part of my pattern swap with Tracy. I love this. And those pockets look like those Muppets. But I really, I think it's really, really lovely. Again, it's got a side zipper. And I think I, I don't see any reason why I couldn't put in a center back zip. So I probably would do that. And then finally, 5209, which I've done a sew along for. You know I love this dress. I wear my blue one all the time. Wilson really likes my blue one. I need to make more of these because it, it's a really, really nice dress to wear. And that's my modern vintage collection. So let me put that back and then I'll catch up with the chat. Just, I will take photos of these Gertie night, uh, the, uh, charm pattern ones while I'm at it. We've got the L'Amour, which I think is beautiful and I want to make. We've got the princess coat, which I will be making next month in a cotton twill as a kind of trench coat. We've got the Liz dress, which I would like to use my Ankara fabric that Karen gave me for my birthday for. But I need to make a muslin of that first. We've got the Hepburn top, which is beautiful and will definitely be getting made over the next couple of months. It's going to work really well with my plans for the next couple of months. And then we've got the Stanwick skirt, which again will probably end up getting made over the next couple of months. Okay, so that's the top shelf of, or the top cubby holes of my pattern shelves. So that's a lot of patterns. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six more shelves to go. That's a lot. <laughs> A lot of stuff. Um, yeah, so let's catch up with the. Oh, I'll turn my phone off because the battery's dying. It's another reason to stop. So, where do we get to? Uh, Bethany C says, One of my make nines is to make the cape coat from the Crimson Peak, but I'm doing awfully on my make nines, but I'm blaming C19 for that. Also, hello, I've been watching whilst editing videos. Hello, Bethany, how are you, my lovely? I love the um. Uh, shirt waist video you did the other day it was awesome um yes i've made i've used one of my make nine so far and my second make nine fabric is down there <laughs> two two of two of my make nines are in my plans for next month and then the rest of them i don't know i don't know we'll, we'll see I'll, I'll get there it'll be fine it will be fine <laughs> Jojo says, every time you say cape, my brain tells me cake. Stop. <laughs> uh, Jennifer says hi to Bethany. Cecilia says, Bethany, I have to keep, I have to keep reminding myself that 20, it's 2020 and it sucks for everyone. So it's not just me. Yep. Marta's here. Hello. Hello. How are you, my lovely? Cecilia says, I really love dirndl dresses. My heritage is Danish and I love Lolita fashion and it's a perfect reason to dress in a combination of the two. Oh, yes. I have um, Karin that sent me an amazing parcel for Christmas one year, which was some silk brocade, ribbon, the little lacing tabs and the Burda copy 
which had all the different dirndl patterns in it. And I am going to pluck up the courage to make that at some point. And it's going to be beautiful. Um, but I really like that dirndl Gertie dress as well. I thought it was really pretty. Uh, Julie says, it took quite a long time, but it's very exciting. And I hope to get share it very soon. Oh, that's exciting, Julie. Sal says, good day. And Cecilia says, hi to Julie. Alison says, can you give me the numbers for the two butterick patterns that you're wanting to rebuy? I can keep my eyes out for them. Uh, 4513. Yeah, I, I do find them on Etsy every now and again, but like I say, they're around about 30 odd pounds. Um, so 4512 and 4513. They're the two that I've, and this is why I trace my patterns because I've cut the smallest size and they're now long, they're now useless to me, which is very irritating. But never mind, never mind. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it a day now. I'm going to have a quick drink first though because my throat is parched. Bye bye. I think Mum's on her way out as well. So I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with us today and um, watching me semi finish this. Like I said, I'm probably going to give it a week to let the hem do its thing and um, then level the hem and that's the other dress. But I really like, really, really like that a lot, a lot, a lot. And the, the only downside of that dress is that I wish it was lined rather than a facing. Um, but I can, see, I can see that I could put in like a half lining or a full lining, like, like lots of people were saying to use the goldfish fabric for this dress, but I'm thinking I wanna do a shirt dress in the goldfish fabric. And the goldfish fabric is ever so slightly sheer, so I would have to line the entire thing. But I, yeah, that's definitely a possibility. And mum did fully line her ball, dressmaker's ball dress when she, she did hers. So it's not like it's impossible, it's just a lot of extra work. <laughs> making a full and a full dress again in lining fabric so um yeah but I'm really pleased with how this has turned out really really pleased and if I did make it with a lining then it would be easy to finish the sleeves so I might try that for the next one we'll see we'll see um Jennifer says, bye, thank you, and see you next week. Anna says, thank you for a hangout whilst I've been sewing. Jojo says, don't forget to like the hangout before you go. Thank you very much, Jojo, and that, yes, that would be great. Jennifer says, remember to like the live stream, please and thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Nimue says, well, I made it back to say goodbye. Had a fun afternoon with you guys. Thank you for joining us, Nimue. Sal says, thanks, Sean, and CoStar Jane, and Mannequin plus Peeps. <laughs> Alison says, good night, Sean and peeps. It's time for Binks, Maya and me to call it a day. I've enjoyed being part of the Hangout very much. Thank you for hanging out with us. Eileen says, thank you. Um, Alison says, love Chiana, love to Chiana and Susie. Julie says, hi all. Lynn says, see you next week. Have a good week. Bethany says, thanks, Sean. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Cecilia says, it's been wonderful. Can uh, see you next time. Lovely peeps. Can't wait to see what you decide what to do, Sean. Bye. Yes, thank you for hanging out with me. It's been lovely. Sorry it's a little bit shorter than usual. Um, but I like I say, I have run out of run out of things to sew, which is not technically true. I've got two things cut out, but I didn't want to sew either of those today. Three things actually. And um yeah. I uh, <laughs> I think I think more pattern organisation next time is the way forward because we've got a lot of that to do and I'm glad that you guys are going to keep me company during that because um, it means that it'll get done, which is awesome. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you all next week live but tomorrow for a video. So bye.